actually have an opera here. That, that's no. a problem. You look at every top team out there, they should have one. Boomich is no real opera, let's be real about it. But even keeping that aside, I'm looking at the results this year thus far. It's been middling at best. And this is a team assembled to win events, to be mm. contending for titles. The only convincing run we saw from them thus far was at the RMR. Just that one event out of five. Yeah, but also because we haven't had an actual goddamn functioning team ever <laughs> no. since the beginning of this roster. Yes, We've had a out, team maniac. where an MVP candidate became an IGL, which meant he was shackled. And then when he was freed up, we didn't have a sniper. So now your sniper is Boomich. Now I'm gonna say something that might sound controversial. If you love Cloud9, you want them to fail here. That's what you want Ooh, them to do. You I want see. them to fail. He's bringing the heat You don't blade. want it's them to think way. that this is go. working. No. Because it hasn't been. So listen, they're going to be fine in, in the opening stage. They're going to make it to elimination stage, just ba purely based on the, the quality that's right here next to me. But I need them to fail after that, because we deserve that strong team to be together. We deserve Electronic to be winning and to be out there, and it's not going to happen with this roster. That pisses me off. It's pissed me off for a long time enough. <laughs> it's the moment. <laughs> like, please. And I, and I say that as a fan of the team. No, I I'm get a fan it. Of them. I do get it. I mean, look, also, just as well, because it's like, we're, we're, we've just framed them as being unbeatable opponents for Ecstatic, and now we're just criticizing. It's true. But I will, I'll will also add as well, you know, Axile, you know, he's been on the carton of milk for a little bit. He, he's missing in action. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, is that is that just a role thing? Or is, is this just eventually they're going to keep playing with each other, get settled, find their levels, and maybe they can have Boomich kind of doing this hybrid kind of thing and it work? No. I don't no. think so. I, I completely disagree with that. I feel like Axel, we've seen enough from him to know what he can achieve in his team, right? Or, or any team for that matter. Have we? Uh, in, have the past, we? in the past, a long time ago. Online? Online? Fair uh, enough. When have we I've, online? I've seen it online a couple of times here and there. <laughs> here I, want, and there. I want to. You want to believe? Like I really want to. <laughs> but I agree with Maniac here. Mm. I do agree. I, this is a team in the current form they are in right now, are not going to be winning any championships. They're not no. going to be going for any really crazy deep runs. Are they going to make it to the next stage? Absolutely, I believe so. When it comes yes. to the next stage, are they going to make it to the playoffs? Maybe, maybe there is a chance. Are they going to go deep? Hell no. So I agree with Maniac in a way. You want to rip that Band-Aid off? Fix it right now, because there's too much talent on this team to be wasted. And, and no, what, what they have though going for them, because I'm not just going to be out there and being a, a bad wolf about them, they have the warrior mentality that you need to have at a time like the Major, at a big event. This is why you can never really discard them, because you know they're ready to get dirty, they're ready to get messy. The Counter-Strike that they play is far from being the most polished, they don't have the latest sort of execute and all, but they, they get, get down to it. The clutches, these late round situations, they know how to handle them. You talk about Axile, we can get technical for just half a second. There's obviously a confidence issue. It's mm. been the case since they've made all these roster changes, it's been a bit complicated. And because of the roles and positions he plays, because he's usually alone on sides of the map, it's harder for you to do what you need to do when you don't have that confidence. He isn't a Rops. Mm. You can leave a Rops on the side and you know that he's gonna make the choice, he's gonna have that moment, he pushes the engine on and he gets to fight when he needs to. Axel doesn't really have the confidence now, so he's left no. a little bit alone. It, when you're pack of the, part of the pack, rather, you get an easy kill here and there. That's how Counter-Strike just works. You trade, you follow your teammate, yeah. tack, you get your easy kill, you're back into the game. When you're on the side, if you're having a hard time, but it's just you. It's mm. you and your thoughts. Yeah. And hello, Dark is my old friend. Yeah, yeah I love the game place to be. Uh, ecstatic. Tell me what's good about them, Blair. Obviously, uh, they caught my eye. There was like one or two players. I was like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, Denmark's cooking again. Uh, an embarrassment of riches in <laughs> it, that. It, 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 it is funny because like, I was looking at his team, right? And you're looking at players like you know your your Salazar's as the opera, for example. Like you're looking like Craig and good Fragris. That was a little too inconsistent incons incons for my liking. But what imp who impressed me the most in his team was your IGL. You know, and Astralis couldn't even pick. Him up, Patty, as an IGL, yes. has been calling some really solid, fundamentally sound Counter Strike. That is a reason they're here, here at the major. They went up against Guild Eagles, a team that's very fiery, very feisty, going to be in your face Counter Strike in a must win game, and they won it. And even individually speaking, I feel like Patty has been someone who's been stepping up to the plate, especially the RMR. If you look at the yes. past three or four months, he's, like, he's at the bottom of the table. You look at the RMR, he was the second or third highest rated player for his team. So, him has been the player for me for ecstatic. A lot yeah, of yeah. IGLs would kill for that stat line, right? Definitely, and the caveat hey, another, as well and, is... Another IGL right there, Astralis, I'm just saying. <laughs> Listen, if you want to make the list of players they should have picked up, they haven't. I think that's an, an <laughs> If I see segment. him at the Astralis party across the road, I know so, what's going on. We're going to have to follow him, make sure someone's got an eye on this <laughs> yeah, guy. Exactly. He was also like, like superly involved in like opening kills. We yes. talked about it at the RMR, so he had to like sort of take risks for his team. And ecstatic is also a team that had to survive a heartbreaking loss 
before mm. they'd actually could punch their tickets. And yep. that to me speaks volume about what the team is made of. Because some teams, after that loss, it was Apex, I believe, one to two, with like last Close few affair. rounds, 11 13, 11 13 clutches that we even broke down on the desk because they were so tense. That would have destroyed lesser teams. They would have never come back from these sort of deficits and these defeats. I also think it's worth mentioning, you know, yes, they beat Guild Eagles, who are definitely a feisty, you know, spicy team. Uh, but also, I mean, Guild Eagles are never not playing. Like, the, the, every day there's a Guild Eagles game, it feels like. <laughs> and they must be one of the kind of more regimented and well-oiled machines out there to go up against. And so to make a comeback against them under those circumstances, what we're really talking about with Ecstatic is character. Yeah, and also I think you, you're talking about character resilience. You can link that to clutching abilities of Salazar. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I got really excited about at the RMR. We sort of discovered him when he stood in for Heroic. We weren't exactly privy to that kind of guy. He came in into a, an unfamiliar situation, complicated situation with Heroic. But then at the RMR, he had more than one very meaningful clutches. 1v2, 1v3s where the aim is just true. And it's not just flicks or whatever. It's just when he's put in a position where the next hit is going to decide whether or not you win your clutch and you better have a safe wrist, he did it. And he'd done it multiple times. I, I agree with you. I think his clutching ability is, is honestly very phenomenal for an opera as well. But what I would like to see more from him is a more consistent output with the AWP across you know, across a series, across a tournament. That is where I feel is lacking. Sometimes he just completely disappears from the server seemingly, and then he has a great clutch here and there, right, Matthew? But if he's able to find a, a modicum of consistency, that's when his team can be dangerous. And that guy right there. I mean, I, I like that we have a shot of Castle as well here as a coach. Yeah. Because he yeah, was just kind of just poached like in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Poached in very, very recently. When you think about, we are, we are labeling these guys debutant and don't really have a whole lot of experience. They can get into their own heads. Supremely important to have someone behind you that is going to yeah. pull you back from darkness if you fall into it. Castle is not going to revolutionize the Counter-Strike they play. He didn't have the time for it. That probably wasn't his task at all. It's just to be behind them and help them see something they're missing when you're in front of the elephant and you can't yeah. see at all. Well, they have to do that. Look, I, I, I did a little bit of coaching way, way back in the day, and that's hard. Who the hell do you I coach? I don't know anything about the game, obviously, but that, that's fine because <laughs> a lot of it is just conflict resolution. It's getting two people who fundamentally disagree to come together and you know, align on a vision for what the team should be doing. It's somebody that's like getting one banged and just telling them, you keep taking this fight, stop <laughs> doing that. Because it's not your day today. Let's move to plan B. And I think it's actually, you know, <laughs> the funny part is Astralis put a statement out saying, you know, we didn't have a guy behind us at the RMR and that was actually a big factor. And then obviously the guy who could have been there mm. is now doing it for ecstatic. I think it's a, I think it's a masterful move by them to sort of bring somebody in at the last second. Yes, uh, absolutely. And, and just to add on to how uncharted of a territory this is for the team of Ecstatic, the RMR was the first LAN as a five-man unit, as a lineup. The RMR, by the way. Mm, mm. And now you're in a major, yes. the biggest event you've ever played together as a team, even as individuals. So yes, having an outside voice, someone who's been around for a while, will definitely help them out. Yeah, the, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I also think I, I bumped into Hobby. I bumped into a lot of players, actually. This is why I love staying in hotels. I just realized I'm Hey, what's up, buddy? People are going to think I'm stalking ridiculous. them, just I'm just following them. I'm following them in dark with hallways. with a glass of wine or cognac, <laughs> like talking to players all day. Mm, let's talk about the you. game. But Hobbit did say something that resonated with me. He said, you know what? I feel way less pressure than the RMR. And I think it's a true statement. Well, it, yes. It sounds counterintuitive because it's mm -hmm. the major and the pressure is supposed to go linearly higher. But we know how cutthroat the RMR is for a big name, big staples. You can never miss at the RMR. Yeah, you can never fail at the RMR. This point onwards, exactly. Essential. And now that you are here, I think playing Cloud9 for Ecstatic, it's not the right time to play them. We would have preferred to play them at the RMR, where maybe they're afraid of not making it through. They've yeah. made it. They're Just here now. Less pressure. The VO, I want to I wanna remind you of something you said the other day when we were having a very sophisticated dinner. And you said this was reminiscent of another event where Cloud9 on day one had a bit of a disaster against an underdog. That is correct. Um, I believe Katowice starts mm. with a loss to Rebels, the oh, regional yes. hero. So now, if yeah. you are a conspiracy theorist, you can already see it are laid down in front of you, right? In Katowice, <laughs> lost to Rebels regional heroes, we're in Copenhagen. Where is Ecstatic from? Right from Denmark. It's all yeah. planned, it's all working out. Uh, here's the the little problem for the maps, right? I'll tell you why. <laughs> Where to begin? It's going to be on, it's going to be an ancient. It's a map that both these two teams, again, you know, best of ones, in the middle of the pack, so to speak. And I don't think Cloud9 really have a, even with the wins they had in the RMR, they don't really have a really deep map pool. Right? They're going to be shaking their hands right there. And despite the fact that this is a map where both the teams have kind of equal win rate on, Ecstatic are grinders. Mm -hmm. They play a lot of this. Now, maybe not against the best of opposition, but they are going to be pretty comfortable here. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, look, Ancient is a map that's really kind of gained in popularity. Teams are kind of like, you know, more inclined to, you know, roll the dice on that one, even if it's not in their wheelhouse. But yeah. I think just the nature of it, I mean, this is a map that's, you know, if you know how to play it, it's always going to be a close matchup. So do you see a way for the upset here? I, I don't really, no. quite honestly. Uh, and I don't really think the map it. could have changed the conversation. Uh, you, just to focus on Ancient a little bit, it's a map that Cloud9 have tried multiple different setups on. And I think, unfortunately for Ecstatic, they might have just now zoned in on what works for them. Mm -hmm. Like, we saw Electronic and Axel permutating, someone playing middle, someone playing towards Donut, changing once again. And now it feels like they've found their way. Hobbit is not a liability at all on this map. He plays it quite well. So the, the win conditions get a little bit dicier for Ecstatic. But again, I, I don't think that my answer would have been different before or after the veto. I still think it's a slam dunk for Cloud9. Personally, I think the heartbreak comes after, later. In the okay, game. all right. The, the only worrying thing for, here for me for Cloud9 is they haven't played this map at the at the RMR, right? The last data we have was yep. in, in Katowice, which is, I know it's just a few weeks ago, but it feels like a lifetime in Counter-Strike. So I do wonder if they've had a few switch-ups coming in here. Uh, Maynak says there is no chance of an upset. I feel there is a tiny little chance. I think I've been very impressed with how the way Ecstatic have played, but if we're just going to play the way of the odds, Cloud9 should still have this in the back. If they don't, then uh, just get them out. I mean, obviously, there's, uh, you know, it can can the fact that Boomich is doing this kind of like hybrid role, can't that play to the advantage of this map? Ah, uh, so the advantage of the map, I guess you can make a point that on the T side you can get away with not having an upper, maybe more than all other maps technically, and this is usually where Kleinine falters, that you have maps where. If the game starts in a bad way, an AWPer is going to help you find openings into complicated rounds. You see teams being down 04, 05 on the T side. Here comes the AWP, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get a couple of picks. We're going to come back into the game. When we have money, we can use our strats. This is usually where Cloud9 falters. If mm -hmm. they go down to that 04, 05, people will stand and look at them thinking, this is, this is bad CS. And part of it is also because they don't have that ability to unlock the game with an opening kill with the AWP. He's serviceable on the CT side, and serviceable is the, the best word I'll use. It's the most generous <laughs> word I can use. <laughs> He's serviceable kind. sometimes on the CT Stop side. It. That's a fact. Yeah. It is a fact. Yes, But on the T side, he is not going to yield it. He, what he does is he creates space. He's going to run Literally, it. he runs. He's Fast gonna, as hell. Roddy Coyote out there. I'm, I'm for Ecstatic, I feel like, uh, just trying to remember a couple of ancient games I saw. Queenix, for me, I mean, he's going to be the A anchor playing over there. And he's going to be facing a lot of pressure coming in. Mm -hmm. I personally feel, when, when you see the T side, I'm not sure which team's going to be starting with the T side over here. But if it is going to be Cloud9's T side, that A bomb side, it's going to be harassed. It's going to be bombarded. <sighs> and Queenix has to stand up to the task. My problem is he has kind of struggled. He didn't at the RMR. Yep. Uh, he really didn't. And, and I feel a little bit uneasy about pouncing down on a debutant and that obviously is running low on experience and all, but within his position, some of the tasks that he has got to do is be clear on his rotations, when to leave your spot, when not to. He made remarkable mistakes mm -hmm. at the RMR, like mm -hmm. being a little bit impatient with the peak, being a little bit antsy, moving around where he doesn't have to. These are signs and symptoms of stress and pressure yep. that we saw at the RMR. I'm hoping that this was discussed and that it's not going to be something that can be abused because if you have an anchor that is a liability, oh. the game becomes so easy for the opponent. Just a little bit of activity on the other side of the map, and here we go on the guy that doesn't know where to position himself, doesn't know how to handle the timing. That could be a problem. E it was at the armor. E even if it's not going to be a bit of a fake, if it's just going to be a straight A hit, you know, you got to at least get a multi kill before you get taken on, or stay alive. You need to stay alive. You lose that bomb site, the smokes come time. in, the retakes are not going to be easy. We might be criticizing Cloud as much as we have so far, but you cannot forget the fact your players like Electronic, your players like Perfecto. Of Once you play this post plant, it's going to be nigh impossible for them to retake. So, yeah, Queenix. I'm going to be keeping an eye on him for this particular map. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously the stakes are really high here because Ecstatic, you know, if they somehow get that upset win, suddenly they're looking Whoa. at potentially a, a, an easier opponent. It could depend on how all the results go. And obviously Cloud9, I agree. I think they're under a, a unique kind of pressure for, than some of the teams that are here because I, I, I think, yeah, there is a potential for a lineup change if this is a disastrous campaign. <laughs> so, uh, which you want. <laughs> so, uh, at um, this point in time, why, I why, think... why do you hate them? Man? I know, yeah, why? No, why? I, I why? actually have be the only one that actually loves them truly, but you know, when you love someone, you have to be honest. <laughs> you gotta be cruel to be exactly. kind. Exactly. You, gotta, you gotta, gotta be honest. If you respect well, someone, we're ready. set them free. I wish I did that in my relationships. The yep. first game of the Copenhagen Major, and this one is gonna be brought to you by a local hero himself. You might have heard of him. It's called Anders, and he's gonna be commentating with the Swiss Army knife of esports, Jason Moses O'Toole. How are you doing, fellas? 
Well, Jason, how are you doing? We're, we're back in the mix. We're back in the chairs. I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm just excited to get this one underway. Pissed around is live. Cloud9 taking on Ecstatic to kick off the Copenhagen Major. Cloud9 going to be starting on this T side, attacking into the Ecstatic defense. And, oh, we got duelies. The duelies major, we'll call this one. It's it's about time. I know you're one of the original, along with Get Right, that really was, you know, talking about the, the duelies before anyone else was. And here they are being used. Actually, we've got two sets of duelies. So attacking into that is best with the elevated position. It could be quite tricky, I reckon. There's some options here that Cloud9's uh, going to be creating as they come out mid. And a little bit of a duel with the P250. Patty's going to be held at bay. Doesn't want to commit, swings very wide. Now you're committed, now you've gone down. Deep smoke in towards Donut as well prevents anyone from shifting in a position to help out. And this split towards the A bomb site is looking real strong. Kaboom, which with all that utility, a smoke and a Molotov, they can clear out so many positions. Oh, they can get, just get the headshots. I guess that'll get the job done as well. Perfecto to take down Salazar to begin with. Three versus five before they even get close to the bomb site. That's pretty sick. I mean, what a start. Hobbit swinging around and shooting Queenix right into the back of the head. This is done. There's absolutely nothing ecstatic could do in this round. No, they they got uh, they got Rack completely outplayed. Uh, I mean, the, the individual decision-making, Patty really committed to that fight over in Red Room. Donut has smoked off. Even if it wasn't, he had no teammates there. So that's that's a huge overcommitment. And then losing the middle of the map in that fashion is, is so hard to recover from for ecstatic. You had like the little one tap from Perfecto out towards Temple. That doesn't help anything. No, it's it's disappointing because you had the setup for it, but are you just they were expecting for the A attack to come through the main tunnel and obviously not from the donut position. So a little bit of a start here. I think this is, you know, that's the first slip up. This shot though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so dirty. He's just sliding into it. All right. Nicely done from Perfecto. Double kill from Hobbit. That's all she wrote. So one to nothing for Cloud9, and they're gonna get the advantage heading into round two. And uh Looks like we're chilling. Looks like we're going to start this round over as everyone hangs out. Yeah. Can't really disagree. Boom. It's done quickly. Boom I've got to say... Um, How do you feel? You're a local hero. Or local Richardson. hero. <laughs> he called you an it as well. Yeah, he that's said, true. It is a local hero. It's a local... I'll, I'll take it. Um, you know... <laughs> whatever praise I can get, really. I'll, I'll... <laughs> it's a low bar for Anders B. Lewis. Yeah. I guess it is local. I just, I think, I always think of Copenhagen as being quite far away, but I do, I only live 30 minutes from here. So it's, I guess it's not that far, but just in Danish terms, a 30 minute drive is a long time, I reckon. I realize in, in the, you know, in the US, it's different. It's yeah, well, no, I think it's more just, uh, I can't really name another city other than Copenhagen and, and Odense, really. So yeah, that's <laughs> I think fair. everyone's just from Copenhagen if you're Danish. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, about true, like a million and a half people or something live in the greater Copenhagen area okay. out of the six million that exist in the country. Yeah, that's so it's a, probably that's it's, a decent chunk. Yeah, it's a good bet anyway. Like you're probably right on if you say that. Well, who do you have winning this one? Um, is, is, is anyone going to pick anything other than Cloud9? Like it's going to be hard to justify that, I think. I think we're going to have a lot of those. Yeah, I'm going with Cloud9, just to answer your question. Yeah. That, that'd be my pick as well. Um, I think it's going to be hard, especially in this opening stage. There, there's, some, there's some tricky matchups uh, in this opening round. Um, this this just doesn't feel like it's one of them. This one doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of uh, win conditions for the ecstatic side of things. Outside of some massive underperformance from Cloud9 and a massive overperformance yeah. from like an individual on ecstatic that you'd really need, it just seems like there's too many things that would have to go right. One of these uh, one of these type of matches where the best of one format probably is super helpful to ecstatic if they can have that one right because you know at least you can have one sick map that nobody saw coming but obviously winning a full best of three i think it's going to be a little bit of a different matter for them sure um but they did perform really well at the rmr i mean i was i was impressed i thought uh, you know there were a lot of other danish teams that we thought were going to go through so yeah and they how to them yeah they didn't didn't exactly work out that way did it <laughs> no it didn't <laughs> I don't know why it has to be that way. It but, is. Um, it is interesting having this be like the main Danish representation at the at the first Copenhagen major. It's like that time you remember when uh, DreamHack put on that thing when they had like three different Swedish teams playing. And it was like a Welcome to Sweden vibe, like one they, of the first Malmo's or something. Yeah. It, well, <laughs> this was in Stockholm. They had like one with, with okay. Fnatic and NIP, and I can't remember what the third one was, but. It's like a whole thing and like, welcome, like I think very games where they're playing, it was like a whole, you know, they were like, yeah, sure. we're Swedish, we're at the top of Counter-Strike, you can come try and they right. all just got blown up. All that, the that, was like, that was like real early in yeah, CSGO, that was like was. 2015, 14? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> it had games. one of the hypest intros that's been made for a really long time, like I'm going to I'm gonna tweet it out after the game, I'll, I'll remind everyone, it's all so right. sick. 
Um, here we are, though. Um, some restarts are coming in. Hopefully, that means we are hopefully good to go in a couple of seconds here. Yeah, they were just running around spawn, shooting at the walls, making sure everything feels good. And, and yeah, this uh, reset, we'll see what they start buying. Looks like it's going to be uh, potentially good to go. Nope. I'm wrong. <laughs> wrong? Wrong again. again. Um, how's, your, uh, how's your vibes currently on the map of Ancient? Are you feeling... You enjoying the map still? Yeah, I love it. Uh, I, I, it's, it's kind of, I guess, a little bit. I mean, I like the way it plays a lot. I one thing I don't like is like the spawn changes back to what like they originally were. Yeah. Um, into CS2, I would, I would like to see them go back to the reverted like a little bit more aggressive. So there's a little bit more chance for like meeting in the early round. It still, it feels like we've gone back to that world where teams frequently sit behind utility. Yeah. True. The nade, blowing, the nade blowing open smokes obviously helps alleviate some of that, but it's not like an every round occurrence the always that you're going to challenge through that. But the map in the mid round is, uh, is a glorious, uh, is a beautiful tactical maneuverability. Yeah, I've really come around myself. I think I was a little bit more sour on it to begin with, but uh -oh. I, I do kind of like it. Okay. A nice tower that's been built in the middle. Knocked down my Hobbit and Ace in the second round, yeah? That's how you want to get the Major started, really. Even if it's just against pistols, it still feels pretty good. Yeah, that feels so good. That stack actually backfires. Hobbit got two kills before he even realized it was a five-man <laughs> stack, and the verticality doesn't do anything. So Hobbit gets away with an Ace, all five kills in the second round. And uh, that's a confidence boost heading into the first gun round. There was no investment from Ecstatic, so no big deal. You're going to laugh that one off. And we get started with the M4s and Utility. Third round, such a scary round here for Ecstatic again. We're talking about a bit of a miracle. I think you framed it nicely. It has to be Ecstatic overperforming. It has to be Cloud9 underperforming. And um, that has to start right now. They can't really be slow at the gate here on the CT side. Deep CT smoke at the double doors, but nobody's going to work with it. Boomich is going to lead the way. Perfect flashbang, but good job holding on. M4 is doing some work. There's a lot of bodies here from Ecstatic. Dragon coming in. Takes down one. He knows there's a second one back there, but he can't beat Axile to the punch. Dude, there's four CTs. Look at the look at the exits on the minimap. Four CTs where they died inside the bomb site. If you cannot hold this bomb site with four defenders, woo, that's bad news for the rest of the map. There's nowhere to go, right? Like I guess there is you could put a fifth player in there and just not defend the rest of the map, but obviously that's gonna feel really, really bad. Phoenix. Already smoked out, flashed out. They have another Molotov behind it even. It actually does get a kill on Axile through, but I don't think it improves the situation that much. He's got no kit. should be able to do this. No kit as well. He's just got to risk it. Yeah, has to go for it. Puts up a bit of a smoke. He's got the grenade up trying to jump his way through, but Electronics on the other side. Four people defending the bomb site and still not able to come up with a victory. And and most of them focused on the B ramp as well. They had uh, enough utility down in cave to make sure that split was not really joined in any efficient manner. And it's just fantastic trading. Two players here. Hobbit gets the trade. Next up, Axile's going to get that trade, the follow-up. And then you're like, oh, there's there's way more people here than I expected. But man, it, it, the fact that this collapses with all four players there is has got to be heartbreaking because it feels like Ecstatic had the right read, the right shift, the right rotation, and it still doesn't pan out in their favor. Well, yeah, I'm not a lot to work with in this round, obviously. It's going to be pistols, a couple of upgraded ones, a single smoke. That is about it. You're right, though. They actually were looking at the B ramp. That's usually my number one criticism for, for, for anyone defending the bomb side on the CT side is that feeling that sometimes people, they show up, but they're never expecting for the T's to really be there and they get caught a little bit sleeping. But kind of looked like Ecstatic were at least aware that that could have happened. Well, yeah, sure. Especially on that round when you know there's going to be a little bit of a low buy coming in. We'll see how they fare moving forward. This round's nice and easy for Cloud9 as they just shift in and walk into some fights. Again, unarmored USPs, a couple upgraded pistols with light armor, but no real stopping power for this defense. And Cloud9 now have the entire map at their disposal. Taking their time here, but can't really blame them again. There's so much on the line. This kind of a format, losing these early best of ones can just set you up so badly. Five seven to the back of the bomb site. USP, not enough stopping power to take anyone down. Hobbit, 
having himself a fantastic start to the series. Yeah, he's uh, it's always always feels good, and they, they brought it up on the desk as well. Hobbit saying he felt a little bit more nervous, a little bit more stress and pressure at the RMR. Now he's in his kind of comfort zone. He's been here plenty of times. Major champion himself. Yeah. Major MVP, if I'm not mistaken, as well. It's crazy to think about, right? Yeah. Like, it was one of the freakiest major runs that really nobody saw coming with Zeus, obviously, the parting Navi. Yes. Playing with Gambit. Like, no one thought that was going to happen. But All the way back in 2017, PGL Krakow. Yeah, what a time. And a pause taken from Ecstatic. They want to talk things over. They get the op out on Salazar as well. The desk had plenty of nice things to say about him with the AWP, his clutch ability. Just to talk about the map a little bit, I mean, I think one of the cool things about the map is that you can do some of these uh, more exotic plays on the CT side where you maybe go like double into the A hallway and push forward. But obviously it's very risky, especially when you lost four rounds in a row. It probably feels really hard to make that kind of a play, but they need something because Cloud9 is showing us round for round here that when they get the real estate, when they get the chance to to take control of the map, they're going to do it. And doesn't look like the Danes have a lot to say about it. Well, and also like the next the next step is for Ecstatic, right? You have to make Cloud9 kind of respect your, your ability on defense in some level. You can't give them the confidence to just work the map in whichever way they please. And, th and that's going to be their first goal with this buy coming in with the AWP on board is let's get an opening kill. Let's make things difficult. Let's make Cloud9 actually challenge and work for it. Because if they just start steamrolling and building up momentum and, you know, as they go, able to access the bomb sites at will, then it just kind of turns into a very one-sided affair. And if you're Ecstatic, this, this has to be the round where you provide some resistance, get around on the board, put a stop to what Cloud9 want to do. Yeah, hopefully they're going to find a way to do that. Uh, time is running out really, really swiftly. Again, the MR12 format. MR12 BO1s can go very, very fast. <laughs> they really can. <laughs> they can go very, very quick. Maybe even quicker if you're actually the people playing. I think watching it, you at least you get like a little bit of a breather when you're playing sometimes. It's just like, boom, 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 and it's done. Yeah, I, I, you know, there, there are certain games as a player where you just feel like you, you kind of like snap back into reality. You're so focused on the game and you're like, oh, we're, we're down like eight, eight, one, eight, eight, nothing. And you're just like, I, I can't even really recall playing this game entirely. Like they can go really fast, especially when there's, it feels like a team is just supremely outmatched by the other, like the nature of this game. So Ecstatic going to try and <laughs> slow down time. Yeah, like if you're driving, you know, familiar road and you're like, how did I get here? Did I just autopilot like for a couple of kilometers? There's a name for that phenomenon. Yeah, like, with the automatic driving where like you don't even realize you're like, I haven't really been paying attention, but my brain is doing it. I haven't killed anyone yet. Yeah, sh I think. I've stopped at all the red lights. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going okay, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, just to make sure everyone understands. That's not how you want to be playing the Major. Not how you want your first game to go. You kind of want to, you know, want to have more of, want to have more agency inside of the game than just being kind of rolled by Cloud9, which is pretty much happening at the moment. I will say this on the other side, though. It's good to see Cloud9 with some confidence and, and just playing better, because for a while, they look like they've been struggling for no real reason. It's well, been very frustrating to watch. I, I mean, let's frame it like this, because the reality of this Cloud9 team Obviously, when they made the roster changes during the during the break after the last major, bringing in the Navi guys, held to be like the next big super team, like hands down, uh, the biggest roster changes of that time, and expected to propel them to like a top three team that's going to be challenging for every trophy. That failed, and they've obviously had Shiro depart the roster. They've had Boomage yeah. come in, brought an in in-game leader. The conversation around them now is the lack of an opera. But realistically, about this Cloud Nine team, is this has to be a good run from them at this major. Like, if it's not, then then changes are going to have to be made. You're going you're gonna to have to find a way to bring an opera and bring somebody in um, who can have an impact and turn the fortunes around. So, I mean, not not just in terms of, you know, wanting to do good at the major. This is this one for Cloud9 has massive implications of what's to become of this roster and the organization moving forward. Yeah, I think that's true. It definitely is. And... I did the desk were bringing it up, talking about a little bit with Axel and the, the obvious lack of confidence that he suffered. Um, would have been, I think, at one point, like uh, one of the top five or something riflers in the world. And in, then, in the online era, coming right out of, yeah. after coming out of the online era, uh, guy was a beast. Top, was top three rifler for sure. And I mean, everyone was kind of looking at his demos and how he was playing the game on an individual level. And yeah, that I don't know if it's a lack of confidence, the transition to CS2, something's not right. Something ain't clicking as well as, as you'd like to see a player of Axile's talents and ability. Um, and that's that's one of the big goals of this Cloud9 org. It's got to be to get him online, to get him back into that shape and get that impact back in the server. Nice early smoke, but 
In truth, Cloud9 are going to be pushing right through a little bit of a boost up, and he did see just the top of his head, but unable to pull the trigger in time. Yeah, they know. they be real careful about that one. You can see the opening of this round as well. Three players in middle. The B defenders throwing utility to slow down the cross towards the ledge. Molotov and nade combo to activate that mid aggression. But as utility starts to fade, they've used a lot of nades to get these aggressive positions. Cloud9 is happy to just play this slow and play it patiently. If you look at the utility, Ecstatic has one smoke remaining on Queenix. That's it. And he's in Donut. So these B defenders are like, we got nothing to stop <laughs> anything. <laughs> It doesn't feel good, does it? Cloud9 kind of letting this simmer a little bit. Expecting a reaction, which they were right about. A little flick there from the AWP. Doesn't really do anything, but still shows they kind of have a good understanding of what they like to play with. Moving forward into Perfecto, he's got the AWP, and it's handy to go down. This is perfectly played from Cloud9 so far. They, they see the aggression. Perfecto sees the aggression coming down ramp, so they take space over in cave. That's going to be allow them to split into the B bomb site. There's nothing to defend. Axel's lurk activates. He shows presence. He keeps two defenders here. That leaves poor Nodius all alone. Wow, <laughs> they've really they've yeah, completely picked them apart. You have Perfecto with the all plan deep behind the double doors. He's got so much safety. He can get into cover. Can take his shot. He got the pick on the aggression. Meanwhile, because you know there's so much presence on ramp, there cannot be presence holding onto cave. So you take space in that fashion. And Cloud9 just play picture perfect Counter Strike and work this defense. Op hasn't even fired a shot for Salazar. Hasn't been involved in anything. And now it's just uh, the plan to save the weapon. Could put this round in the Counter Strike school, but couldn't you? This is um, this is beautiful. Even the slowdown once they realize there are no more grenades and they 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 see it coming. That ecstatic when they don't have more grenades, they probably have to move forward to try and get some information, at least to make up for the lack of grenades. They do, and they kind of get caught doing it. Damn. Wow! All right, Hobbit came to play. Yeah, you could say that again. He's twelve and one right now. Obviously, five of those kills yeah. in one round, but still. Seven and one still ain't bad. If you, if you take the fluffy bad. egos out of it. Umich. You could see he can hardly sit still in his chair. He's just electrifying at the moment. Some of these kills are even fairly pedestrian. You know, a guy like locked in a corner. It's the, nice the thing, one versus one. it's the nice thing about playing just a really smart tactical game is that it does make your job easier yeah. down the stretch. Yeah, we're not talking about huge clutches or anything crazy like that. 5-7, just getting completely out-timed on that one. And this is what I mean by, you know, trying to slow down and trying to temper the confidence of Cloud9. I mean, they know, they know they're up against a half-buy, so there's not, you know, a whole lot of a whole lot of danger to it. But still, just, just an A-rush, and Hobbit just kind of even swings through the edge of his smoke just as it plumes, able to grab an easy one. Ecstatic's gonna come in and try and get some kills in garbage time because this round is not going in their favor. Yeah, I mean, that's... We'd be happy right now if they get a couple of kills and steal a rifle. Like, that's kind of the, the bar set solo right now for Ecstatic. Just do anything at all at, the, at this stage of the game. It's already been too much. They've already lost control. If he can grab an AK-47, that, that, ain't, that ain't bad uh, at all. All yeah. things considered, he has a smoke to cover him. He walks up and gets it, and he's looking for anyone to exit. So he should be able to hold on to this AK-47. Bomb's going to go off. Wants to do a little bit of nade damage to cause the explosion to take down Electronic. Oh, and he survives with three, but Exile does fall. And a good recovery of the AK-47. So something to be happy about for Ecstatic. It's a real thin silver lining here, I'm not going to lie. But, yeah, you know, it's, we'll we're, give it we're to scraping them. the barrel. <laughs> Looking for anything that we can. It's like, please, something that we can say that's gone in their favor. It's been very, very thin at the moment. Six and oh, leading into the round number seven. Paddy with no kills. You Kragen and Salazar there with one kill each. Two on Queenix and I mean, Nautilus. they're averaging one kill per round. Just put it that way. Six kills across the entire Ecstatic team, so it's it's not pretty. It's not great. No. This time they go for control of B lane. In Cloud9, it looks like they have an indication. Hobbit and Boomich fell away from the double door, so Hobbit will come back into a lurk position. A lot of resources for Ecstatic again on this side of the map, and Cloud9 is going to start progressing through A main. Salazar's got to find a way to get this up in position to have impact on the round. 
Yeah, if they hit the A bomb site a little bit early here, if, if Queen is going to be alone on that position, they're, they're, that'd be, that's going to be really rough, isn't it? They're missing a, a timing window, Cloud9, but it's okay because the window is wide open. <laughs> There's still, there's still an opportunity, although a defensive smoke at A main, I think, kind of ruined Cloud9's idea. So this is actually pretty nice now from Ecstatic. With that defensive smoke in A main, it allows them to have two defenders there. One player is aggressive in mid. They control B lane as well. They have a lot of information on the map, and they've at least slowed Cloud9 down. They've taken away, you know, plan A. But plan, again, B, no. plan B is still dangerous. They are pretty much out of grenades here, so it has to come down to just the raw mechanics. Queenix, good, and a little bit of a follow-up here. Kraken trying to do the best that he can. He do line up for him. A big double kill. Two triple at the end, and he'll close it off, finding four of them. That is absolutely what they needed. Yeah, that one is really nicely done. And Cloud9 just kind of get funneled as they move around this map. They lose control of B lane. They don't have control of middle whatsoever, and they really just get funneled into that A main hit, and Ecstatic is ready for it. First round on the board for Ecstatic. It took some time, but... Um, we got you know. there. Yeah, we got there. Well, and, and nicely for them, four players survive in that victory. They recover an AWP, or they, they still have the AWP on Salazar, I should say. He didn't go down. But four players surviving means like you're not, you're not in that immediate danger of getting reset. You've got plenty of money to work with. It's built up on a couple players. So now you've got some room to work with, and wow, that just barely survives. He still goes for it. But an easy kill even while blind for Patty. Yes, really well done. Another good flash set up there with Boomich. Going to get found in the middle of it. And now you have to hit this timing if you're Cloud9. Yeah. You, you have to. You have no other options. You can get a clean kill on Queenix. That's what they're hoping for. And his job, just stay alive in this position. Just whatever you do, don't go down for free. Smoke on top, Molotov as well. He's playing it right at the edge, trying to optimize this one. But there's a flash to follow it up as well. Axile's a pretty good kill. The trade is there, and the rest of them are starting to rotate on in, so there should be no more surprises here for the CT side. Ticker the Molotov is going to let him know that Kragan is very close behind that smoke. Now the real issue is Perfecto doesn't feel comfortable finding a new position. He's stuck inside the bomb site, so Electronics got to stand tall and fight with him. A little bit of a spray. If that would have been an instant headshot for Electronic, maybe it's a different round, but um, all right, second round for Ecstatic, and they keep three people alive this time. Yeah, that's that's really, really nice. I think you're exactly right, though. Queenix committed around the edge of that smoke. That could have gone way worse. Got on Kragan to get the rebuttal through the smoke to help alleviate some of that pressure. Very different retake if there's three Cloud9 players alive and they feel comfortable falling out of the bomb site after the plant, but that's two in a row for Ecstatic. They're going to try and claw themselves back into this map. Starting to, starting to look good. I think the Cloud9 timeout right now is to discuss how exactly B lane is being controlled by Ecstatic. Because you have an opening double kill yeah. from, from Jaguar in this round. Previously, uh, two rounds ago, was just complete B lane control that Cloud9 had to back away from. So the conversation now is, is do we want to fight for that? Do we want to try and exploit some of that early presence and go elsewhere with, with a little bit of gusto? Or how can we, how can we make sure this doesn't happen again? I mean, there are definitely ways, I think in the meta right now, you see sometimes teams just hit the A bomb side really early because a lot of a lot of CT sides will have one or none in the A bomb side to begin with. So there is, there can be a timing window like that where you can just kind of get there and, before anyone else shows up. And obviously, Clan Line can't, ooh, hold the phone, fast out mid, fast out mid, running right through the Molotovs, extinguishing them, and Axel's got a wide angle. Kragan comes back, and he's been an impact player. He's out of the fight. Trying to get the spray for the smoke there, and they know that someone else could be in the middle. Look at how weak this leaves the B defense. Cloud9's going to be back. happy with this. This one for one trade, this four on four now in the mid round. Yeah, they definitely will be. Smoking it off. Waiting. Oh, it's so close, but actually. Nodios on top of the smoke. I can't believe he won that fight. Looked yeah. like Axel knew. Yeah, I think he did. I think he realized that smoke was a little bit shallow, so he was looking for that exact peak. Just fires off a little too quick. Hobbit now. Good game from him, but he's shut down as well. Ecstatic, it took him six rounds, but they're in the game. Now they're starting to control things from the CT side, and this is looking much better. That's a really long time to war bump into a game, but, I mean, it's not done yet. Love this mid position. They're really far back on the B bomb side. They're playing it well. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I like the passive B defense at this point. You're just watching for them to commit. You have such a massive advantage. You don't actually need to hold on to the bomb site, especially as you mentioned, that mid position can be a very fast flank. Boomich is just going for the bomb plant. 
That's victory of sorts in this round, but a win here near impossible, and he won't expect the timing on that flank. So three now for Ecstatic, playing six for Cloud9. What a round from Norios. That's uh, like that middle fight that he wins both of them in there, making all the difference in the world. And yeah, good with the flank as well, but still. The early kill on top of the smoke against Axile is probably what really made the difference. Okay, this starts getting a little interesting now. Cloud9 yet to, uh, even out of a timeout, yet to find the, the solution, the fix. The mid play, I think, actually was, was successful. I think they're happy with it, but losing the engagements after the fact. Axile getting picked off over the top of the smoke. But Exotic creeping closer to making this a game, challenging for this map. Hey, we're starting to feel like one of those games that you're just like, oh, okay, they never showed up, on to the next. But um, happy to see that they are waking up just a little bit. With the individuals here, a little bit slow to start on the Danish side. Still hadn't really seen Salazar with the AWP do a lot. Yeah, I was, I was, about, I was thinking the same thing. We saw during the RMR, we had some great rounds out of him. Um, there definitely were times when he went missing on during the RMR as well, but I feel like once he's firing off, I mean, it's a decent map for it. Well, it's also, it's it's no no necessarily huge criticism on him. If you think of the way this map is played, obviously Cloud9 just, you know, six rounds in, there were only six kills total on Ecstatic going into round seven. But then after that, the success of Ecstatic's defense has been controlling B lane aggressively, controlling mid aggressively, and the op just not involved in those kind of plays, right? Now we get an explosion towards this B bomb site. Boomich trying some shock and awe, and he's gonna make his way in. Could, oh, could there be anything more Boomich like jumping through the Mac 10 as everyone is flashed on the other side? But look at this. It's a pretty good comeback into the round, actually. Krogan looking to see if he could do it at range. He's going to beat that Mac 10 every single time. Axile on his own, shot in the back, didn't even have his rifle out. What a recovery from Ecstatic. They were going to lose that round. Yeah, that, that round is one. I, I mean, the, the one kill we just called his name, Salazar. Taking down yeah. Boomich and making sure he doesn't get killed, making sure that Cloud9 can't control behind the cube on the CT side of things. That bails them out massively. Alleviating that kind of a pressure with that kind of aggressiveness from Cloud9. Obviously, Patty, who's been aggressive in towards Jaguar, is able to get a quick flank down lane, hold for Perfecto to lurk through that smoke last as the trailer. And all of a sudden, Ecstatic's within two. Okay, yeah, now it's getting a bit more interesting. They're saving the game for us, which, and we appreciate that. First game of the Major. First game of the CS2 Major, mind you. Good stuff here. Hobbit. He was flashed. You see that flash coming in from the CT side, but it wasn't quite enough. And Paddy's dead as a result here. Yeah, Boomich. He knew someone was waiting for him. Going to be taking down Queenix. It's a little bit too much of a good start here for Cloud9. How will Ecstatic bring this one back? They almost have to risk something here. Oh, the risk is Kragen. Now you have the op in position as well. Electronics already creep past it. He hears those footsteps. He's going to step right through this smoke. He knows there's not enough players to watch for this kind of a play. And with him in this position in Red Room aggressively, Cloud9 can now just kind of pause and wait, look for aggressive, look for that response that you're mentioning. And once they see what the response is, then Electronic can put all the information together and make his play. Yeah, very, very patient here. They knew someone had to be coming, and they're not wrong about it either. Flash around the corner. Even if Nautilus wanted to push out into that one, he probably cannot. And Electronic's going to wrap on this B bomb site. Nodios can't really do anything. Boomich goes down to the AWP. All right. Look at the health on Hobbit. He's so low, but still alive. Another triple for him. He's 18 and 6 right now. The more veteran players inside of the server. Maybe the most veteran player in the server. Yeah, perhaps outside of uh, Electronic. Crazy. It'll be a seventh round for Cloud9. They're really doing a great job once again. I think big difference here, getting this one last round on the board. Getting this last off as well. He's boxed in. Yeah, you're right. Oh, he's trying his best. Smoke on one side, fire on the other. Trying to see if he can pull off some sort of magic trick inside, but instead... Headshot through the smoke, Chris Perfecto takes him down, 7-4, to four. one more round of the first half up to come. Yep. We'll see if Cloud9 can build on this lead or if Ecstatic can keep it as close as they possibly can. 
This time, this has worked so many times throughout the half, but finally Cloud9 put a stop to it, looking for that exact flash peak that Patty's done a number of times to get a double kill, to, to control that lane. This time they shut it down, able to pick this defense apart. Such an advantage very early on in the round that Ecstatic just didn't have a whole lot of good options to play. Deep utility. Oh, that is, he, he's running to two grenades. I thought they were going to get slowed from the first one, but he still did the Jibran boost somehow. It didn't slow them down, but they've taken a lot of damage just to get this mid control. Nice blowing, open up the smoke there in the middle, but somehow, Kragan, in spite of the earlier grenade damage, quicker on the trigger and actually getting the frag. That's. Yeah, it's an think interesting it, way to get I, I think Electronic tucked into that corner didn't actually have an angle to really spot him all yeah. that well. Nice idea. They knew the mid-aggression was going to be there, but it goes the other way. So 4v5 for Cloud9. Going to try and convert after an opening kill loss. And Boomich misses the jump up, so a little bit of noise made. Still three defenders at this B bomb site, and this time they've emphasized holding on to Cave with a vertical stack. 50 seconds on this one. Uh, it looks like Cloud9 want to end at this B bomb site, but they, I think they almost have to apply some kind of pressure in middle. Make Ecstatic think that there's potential for Red Room, although Queenix is watching that. Now they're kind of stuck in cave. The stack works beautifully. How has he done so much? That's Krogan getting three kills. Remember, he got double naded in the middle and put down very low on health. He gets a fourth once again. My god. He's out of control in this round, goes for the ace, but will be shut down by Perfecto. But you've got to assume that he's done plenty enough here. 20 seconds left. Don't see Perfecto winning this one alone with an AWP against three people. I can't believe that the round started so badly for Krogan. It's still he ends up here. What a, what a half he's had in terms of recovery for Ecstatic. Remember, he got a triple kill on the first round that Ecstatic put on the board with a, yeah. with a large push towards the A main and into the A bomb site. He shut that down. Here he gets this quad kill. You had an impact from Nodios, who had one round, Patty, who had a good round, and all of a sudden, Ecstatic is right back in this. They're within two going into the second half pistol. So not a bad recovery whatsoever from the Danes as they're looking to cause it upset. So shuffling the sheets, going over to the CT side of the playbook. Or the T side of the playbook. Excuse me. Yeah, see if they could do anything here. I think winning a pistol round is going to be really, really important for them. But I've, I'm impressed. I'm impressed they managed to make this kind of recovery. It didn't look like that was going to be happening at all. Cloud9, so comprehensive with Hobbit. Just spearheading his way through the early part of the game there. 7 to 5 is the scoreline going into the second half. You can see Hobbit there at an 18 to 7 scoreline. That's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's beastly. Although, a scoreline like that, and then you look up at the main scoreboard of 7 to 5, and you're like, man, I feel like we should have had maybe a couple more than that. Yeah. Blame the teammates, I always say. <laughs> Name and shame them. <laughs> All right, Ecstatic Utility is going to be coming towards the B-bomb site. They're going to split this. Two coming up ramp late. The main thrust coming through Cave with Utility. Boomich is going to spot it out with a quick jump and then fall back behind the smoke. Hobbit's got to be real careful at this angle. Tapping away with the USP, but it'll have to be a five-on-five -five retake. No picks through the smokes come in. And good Utility from Ecstatic has at least netted them a bomb plant. At a strong post-plant position. Yeah, this has actually worked out incredibly well. Wish they had another Molotov to try and stop the bomb from actually getting defused, but they don't. Shot right through, and as it fades, look at the aggression coming out from the T side. Kragen lands a headshot as well. It's more time off the clock here, and he's going to keep it going. The clock, it's got so many bullets, and he won't stop here. Two versus three, Kragen looking to do a little bit more. He didn't even reload. Finally, he's going to get a chance, but it doesn't even matter. Queen X will take the rest down. It's a beautiful round from Ecstatic. Yeah, really is. I have nice and simple. Utility up in the two choke points. Nobody inside the bomb site from Cloud9 playing it passively, and the retake just gets shut down. I don't think Cloud9 expected the battle to occur just as that smoke faded, right? I thought they were I, I think they thought they'd be able to kind of get that long angle to kind of wrap around the cube. But Ecstatic was right in their face from the moment those smokes disappeared. Good P250 work from Queenix down the stretch and Ecstatic. Get that all-important pistol round. Now within one. You are right, though. If you look at the rest of the scoreboard, I mean, I think especially Perfecto and Electronic look like they're a little bit out of place at the moment. Electronic on just two kills. If you think about, again, pedigree of player that he is, you expect that he can step it up and maybe he will in the second half here, but we kind of need him to. Another player who had the 
in-game leader responsibilities that he switched into from being a star player and now true. trying to find his game back. It really hurts those, some players. Those decisions from stars to switch into IGLs always makes me nervous for this exact reason. Just one game, so we're not taking uh, taking too much from it. Oh, that from Salazar, if you see that in the slow motion, that's going to look sick. They ran into the shot, I think, on the second one. But yeah, pretty... This gets interesting now. I mean, in a world where not a whole lot of us saw room for an upset win. Yeah. Uh, let's see how these first gun rounds go, but Ecstatic have themselves in a great... Considering they started down 0-6, to six, pretty wild to consider. Well, they're making a great case for themselves right now. They really are. 7-1 to one run for Ecstatic to get to this point. Three from us on the board for Cloud9's defense. They prioritize a little bit of utility. All right, here we go. Quick into the middle. Electronic. It's a pretty good kill with the Famas. Axile there to follow it up, and flashes are going to be coming out into the middle. They're actually bombing into each other inside of the smoke. It's Axile lining up a double kill. And Nadius, he'd love to do more, but the truth is, there was even a player behind him. I don't think you could have done anything there, but. That's so much chaos. With that little bit of a distraction from Boomich, like the noise, uh, he tagged him through the smoke, even bumping into him prevents him from actually crossing that smoke in time <laughs> to join up with the mid hit. True. So it seemingly just inadvertently worked in the favor of Cloud9 and give some credit over to Exile for a good job holding the smoke deep in. Him and Electronic working together to man that mid defense and it works perfect. Yeah. Big boom, bodyguarding the, <laughs> the actual lane. Just can't get through, that's frustrating. Well, like you said, wait to see the gun rounds. We've seen one of them now, and obviously with Cloud9 winning it in that fashion especially, makes you think that uh, it's maybe their time to start to come back into it a little bit more. Exile's going to be asked for a little bit more as well. That's a good timing on the Molotov as well. Smoke is coming in. That's going to buy, what, six, seven seconds for teammates to shift and rotate over. And now Electronic, it gives him time to get in a position and lay down a smoke, so the hit's going to be uncomfortable for Ecstatic. Oh! Speaking of uncomfortable, the Molotov right on top, it's Axile, the spray, it goes on forever, but he can't find the second kill. Still, a three versus three. Good position here from Kragen, you can see he's on lookout as the bomb is getting planted on the other side. Three versus three, Oof. and Nautilus, yeah. It's the sound you make when you see the comeback happening. Nautilus, timing is everything here, he's gonna find the kill against Hobbit. Boomich alone with the Famas, he knows where one of them is, he probably guessed where the other one is, gonna pick up the kit, but... Is it going to be quite enough? Oh, he's going to go straight for it. Just no way. not even faking it. He will get checked, but that's a nice idea. <laughs> I was a little bit worried. Smart play from Salazar, though. He tucked himself into A main out of sight. He just said, I'm not even touching the keyboard for a little bit. Nice flank to get that kill. And Ecstatic barrel through some well-timed defensive utility from Cloud9. It does not dissuade Ecstatic whatsoever. Fantastic trading coming through. Axile couldn't handle the spray for a double, but this flank really sealed it. That Molotov that goes to the back of the bomb site, so that the reinforcing player just can't do anything. What a frustrating experience! Uh, yeah, you you have that's like a, such a critical Molotov. That headshot yeah. angle can be so tricky if he's able to get into cover, peek at will. You have so much attention waiting for the repeek, and that's where his kind of teammates and his reinforcement can have more impact. So, forcing Electronic to commit to a fight out in the open at range. It's the kind of grenade that really levels the playing field too, because. The CTs have put down smokes in the main entrance, so you have the disadvantage of running out of a smoke, but it kind of it makes up for it when the other guy's standing in fire. You're like, all right, cool, we'll trade it like that. And let's be real, it's a, it's an easy Molotov to, to know. It's not yeah. a tricky lineup. You bounce it off the wall. You can, you know, you know your geometry, you're, you're fine. Geometry. So, Trigonometry. Yeah. Yeah. You so, know, all, <laughs> all the math. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> There's no excuse for you not to know that Molotov is, is my point. Everyone learned that. Yeah, or to not know geometry is also important, <laughs> like, you know? Everyone always says, like, oh, what do I need to know about, you know, the... I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> what do you need everyone to... says it, huh? Yeah, Just... everyone says it, Jason. Sure. That's why I won't. I'm not like, I'm not like the plebs. I won't say it. Yeah, well played. All right, little bit of a labored buy for Cloud9. Not the ideal time to have this coming out. MP9 on Hobbit, CZ on Boomit, so he can get utility. Famas on Electronic. And just due to the... Oh, that's nasty. God damn. 
Electronic is no more. Having himself a rough game. Up to four kills, sure, but... And it's early access, early in the round to have access into middle. Oh, nice dink. Patty's gonna be forced passive. Oh, no, he's not. Not, not at all, actually. How is he done so much damage? Axel falling back. He's almost got a triple on that one. So much output, but is it gonna be quite enough? They still have the bomb site, and they are swift to put the bomb down here, Ecstatic. They're not really delaying it at all. What could Cloud9 do in this one? They're so far away, they're already pulling Nothing. back. That's a, that's a really good assertive call from Cloud9. You get that mid pick real, real quick and easy, and you know that's going to be the next defender. Remember, Electronic, the guy we saw yeah. slide into the bomb site as well. You know that's the support system for the A bomb site. Anyone else trying to recover that position from the B bomb site is going to be two, three seconds late. You could see Boomich turn the corner and CT spawn, and Queenix is already swinging wide into the bomb site, holding him at bay. So a good call to exploit the kill that you find in middle. And Exile did actually a ton of work, all things considered the position he was in, just not able to, to slow down that hit whatsoever. And Ecstatic has taken a lead. It's now a 9-2 to two run. From 0-6 to six to 9-8. Cloud9 fans in shambles right now. There's, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. If you started watching the start of this and you were rooting for Cloud9, you would have been on such a high. And then ever since, it's just your face like slowly crumbling up more and more like, no, why? <laughs> why is it happening? And it's not the first time that we've seen this from them. Like, it's just the summit about this lineup that is hard to oh. get, uh, super excited about. They are one of the heartbreaking teams. Yes. Molotov going to get extinguished. Two players trapped inside that smoke in Covey. Not aware of any pushes, so having to deploy Molotovs to make sure nobody can swing on this fragile position. At least they have the AWP and the AK saved from the previous round, so that's well, very helpful. Yeah, true. But also, this is the team that we kind of criticize for not having a real offer. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. in the hands of Perfecto, so yeah, it's a nice thing to have, but the idea that Perfecto is going to be the one with the op to turn this round on its head, that's quite a stretch. Obviously, he'd love to be rewarded here. Hoping for the headshot on that spray, but not going to really get it. Three people over at the B-bomb site. Perfecto in the middle looking around with the AWP, he's going to get smoked off here. If he tries to beat the smoke and actually makes it, that's such a sick play. But otherwise, he's entrusting the AK on the side to really do all the work. Remember, it's too much of a risk. All things in this round, if, if this doesn't go well, the AWP is just going to save. He's going to hustle over to the A bomb site and hide. So they really need Hobbit to provide something if Perfecto is going to get activated. He missed the timing over towards ramp. Oh, the spray comes in. He can't find any of the kills. He's out of ammunition. Easy. Easy for Nautios. And all of a sudden, all the pieces fall into place. How do you do so much damage and find no kills? Three of them. They didn't even know what they were getting punished from. And they just kept walking in front of the bullets. If they had anything else yet, it would have been quite doable to clean it up, right? And somehow they're just not able to. That is unfortunate. Like you said, the secondary objective here, save the AWP if you can, if it's at all possible. Perfect. It's going to be found right away. 10 to 8. Jason, what is happening? Why, why, Look, why is it happening? Yeah, the majors get weird, man. The majors get a little bit weird. Ecstatic looking to cause an upset in the opening match of the Copenhagen Major. And they're just three rounds away from doing it. And Cloud9 have yet to win a round that settles the CT side. They have yet, to, have yet to win a round that allows them to actually take, yeah. you know, get a tight grip on this defensive side that's convincing enough to say, we've shut down what Ecstatic likes to do. Now we're in some control. Now we can play our game. They've been labored. They've had low economy buys. They've had FAMAS. They've had CZs and MP9s. Cloud9 out of this timeout better turn it around immediately because Ecstatic is marching towards that upset. And you, you couldn't have asked for a better start. It was so flawless what they were doing, Cloud9. They were absolutely running them over. And they were giving out a lot of praise to you know, like the tactical understanding when they were on the T side at the beginning. They were really picking up out the Danish defense every single time. And then, I mean, especially Kragen started to get back into it. Had a couple of back-to-back -back triple rounds. Yeah, you got to give him a lot of credit. He's yeah. the one that got this team started, you know, out of... It's, 
even to get their first round, and he's continued it ever since then. And look oh, at look this at call that. from Ecstatic. It's sick, isn't it? It's what I talked about in the first half. Sometimes they win. just call out a spawn. There's nobody at the bomb site because they're in middle. And, and I mean, this is just calling based off the success you've had, right? Yeah. Oh no, Cloud9. Five on five retake, and that's a rush without using a whole lot of utility. There's still a smoke, there's still an extra Molotov to delay the retake even further and make it disjointed. Cloud9 have a real decision to make if they even want to go for this. I think they've got to investigate and see if they can get some kills at the very least, but it's a big risk. It's so risky. It's one of those rounds where if they get one kill here, they're definitely going to go for it and they might lose everything. A little bit of a shot. Hobbit gets one in return. They're still committed to it. It's all the rifles on the line here. This is it for Cloud9. They must win it. The fuse is happening still inside of the smoke and they actually do it. Hobbit on the lookout. I can't believe it. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful from Cloud9. That is just creating chaos. Smoking the bomb, get on the defuse, and have everyone else hyper aggressive to make sure the attention of Ecstatic cannot be on spamming the smoke for the defuser. And everyone from Ecstatic is so passive. Molotov forces one player into Temple, two in A main. There's not enough bodies actually preventing Cloud9 from entering that bomb site for the retake. Not enough people there to prevent Cloud9's first step. You, we talked about heartbreak. If Ecstatic end up losing this game, this is the round they're gonna look back on every single time. They're gonna say, we had it. Five people alive with the bomb planted. Now they're gonna try and put some pressure on the middle, but there's three people here. Same setup for Cloud9. Three in the middle, nobody at the A bomb site. They just say, you're not gonna do it again. You're not gonna rush the A bomb site one more time. And we're gonna call you on that. Oh my lord, that retake might be momentum shifting. That is such a huge round. Ecstatic has gotta feel so devastated. Getting into the bomb site clean with no issues, five players alive and still losing it. And now you just get shattered in the follow-up round. This might be one that turns the tides back in Cloud9's favor, on the verge of evening things up at 10. That, that's easily what loses you the map. Speaking of confidence and even the money to go with it as well, I mean, this is devastating right now. Oh, good timing. Good timing. I think Hobbit, he was walking away, shifting away very, very slow. He must have heard a footstep to turn around and drop that smoke, and it was needed because Ecstatic was starting to probe into that B bomb site. Salazar, Queenix, and Nadio is trying to find the solution. All three players over in B lane. Perfecto's up and Donut to make sure they can't fall back. They can't readjust across the map to the A-bomb site. And three defenders here in a very strong setup. Are well, they going to get this cave position down? But how much is it going to help them? One more smoke on the ramp. That's the last defensive piece of utility that Cloud9 have. Yeah, the rest is on Perfecto. And he's, like you said, miles away. So it's up to this. 22 seconds. Electronic. Kind of looking for it. And they are aware, but it doesn't even matter. Bomb just barely getting planted. Salazar on his own. Very low on health and completely isolated behind the pillar. It's going to be Hobbit to find him at the end. His 25th victim there. That ties up the game, 10-10. to 10. Really, really smart experience play from Cloud9 as well. Just playing right behind that Molotov, allowing them into the bomb site, not trying to overextend too aggressively. And now salvaging AK-47s for the final stretch of this map. We're all tied up at 10, so Cloud9 have their rebuttal. Pulling the same defensive play in back-to-back -back rounds, even if it costs you in the first one, just knowing that there's very, very slim chances that Ecstatic would try and do the same rush again to the A bomb site, and they were absolutely right. So, well played, Cloud9. Good understanding of what's going on here. Twenty-first round is coming up. Three max tens, fast-paced. Yeah, straight into the bomb site. They tried it in A, and it worked. Now at the B bomb site. Hobbit, even blind, is able to get that kill. He keeps it going. They line up for him, and it's three shots before they finally take him down. Nodius in the one versus four here. It's a good start, but it is not going to be quite enough. Those, like, half by Mac 10 rushes towards the B bomb site, everything falls onto that first right. kill. The yes. fact that Hobbit survives, then all of a sudden Cloud9 know what's happening. And that's when counter utility comes in. That's when Boomich just chucks a flashbang into the sky over the cube and it activates Hobbit for repeeks. No one can get this trade kill. Tucks him in nice and safe, waiting for the flashes. Might, and it's just I absolutely mean, perfect. Might even say, Jason, that that first kill becomes a vector since you were so excited about math earlier. Okay, know. well done. There you go. Is that the word you were searching for the whole time? No. <laughs> Still don't have that one. Huh? My brain is really almost not working, Jason. Sure. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm doing my best to cover it up, but you know. <laughs> 
It'll get there, like, it'll get there eventually. Yeah, by map three. Yeah, something like that. All right, Electronic gets a gift. He was aiming at Kragen, finds Patty through the smoke. He's traded off. It's one AK-47, a hero AK on Kragen, and why not? He has been the hero in this game for Ecstatic, so give him a chance once again. Five versus five with a bomb planted. That's the round that you're not able to put through. It's the knockout punch if you win it, and it's gone the other direction. Heartbreaking if you don't. I like that's again. I like to talk about this a lot. But there are some oh, rounds you just fun. remember forever. Oh, you think that's going to make the difference, Dolius? I mean, it's going to at least get them a bomb plant. Okay, yeah, that's a good start. It'll definitely give the eight hundred dollar bonus that can maybe secure things. Boomage here in the footsteps. He knows they're coming. But what a great oh, 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 oh. Boomage. Four kills. He heard the steps. He knew they were tap dancing on the other side. He even knew one of them was going to jump through, and he still got every single one. I don't know. It, I don't know if Ecstatic was entirely ready for that swing. As weird as that is to say, that first player jumping, I don't even mind it. But everyone after that was a little slow to get into the trade game, and Boomich is able to line up four kills with one magazine. That looked like a panic moment when you're like, "Oh, they're actually coming for me. I'm, I'm alone." No panic in Boomage whatsoever. I, th I think I, I think there was a. I mean, obviously, due to the weaponry, a lack of confidence in being able to hold off things individually. But they just they just line up way, way, way too much. And Boomage is loving life after that. He was real nervous, and that swing gives him all the kills. And twelve to ten, Ecstatic made a game out of it. They've got two more chances to take this into overtime. This has got to be heartbreaking, though. What a massive run that they went on to take control of this map, to take a one-round lead, and from there, Cloud9 shut the door. It's the way that they got here. They, they, they've ended up here in the most painful possible way. It was a 10-2 to run to take a 10-9 lead. That's what I mean. Like you're, 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 you're on top of the world at that point in time. Like it, fe it feels like you've absolutely figured it out. And that one round, defusing inside of the smoke with a retake from Cloud9. It was a beautiful retake. You got to give credit to Cloud9 for that one as well. I, I think I said already at the start of it, I said I don't think they should even do it because it's, it looks so risky, but obviously completely wrong. Like, they absolutely knew what they were doing. Real sick, wasn't it? Here we go. Grenades into the middle, but it's all for show. Nobody really on either side is fighting for this at the moment. It could be another B finish here if they can find it. One good entry, but Cloud9, they're one round away from winning the map. They've at least, the defense is passive now in middle. They got out quick enough and emphatically enough that Cloud9 don't actually want to mess with mid. So they forced Electronic to take an off angle and donut. They forced Perfecto with low HP back from middle. They've opened up access to Red Room. What can Ecstatic do from here? They've got one smoke, one Molotov remaining. Other than that, it's just a plethora of flashbangs. Good little Molotov. Just to clear out the first part of the cave and make sure that no one's hanging around. And he was flashed in to take a peek, but this position in middle from Kragen, I think, is, is the interesting one if they can play around it. Hard thing is, because they forced the defense so passive at the B bomb site, Kragen's got to be real nervous about this being watched, which it is by Perfecto at range with the AWP. And the other hard thing is, with one smoke remaining for Ecstatic in the rest of this round, what's, what's, your, what's your best percentage to win? If you have one smoke, they think it's the A bomb site. Kragen to cut off rotations lurking in red room. Okay, well, in terms of numbers, they're not wrong, but what a Molotov to put down at 29 seconds. That's going to really slow them in the middle. It's Perfecto. It wasn't even Boomage. It was at range. The AWP all the way from the back of the B bomb site. And now Electronic finally getting his chance in the sunlight to get a couple of kills here. Trying to find their way back. But Salasai is on his own. 10 seconds for a one versus three. And they are right on top. Oh, the shot rings through. Perfecto. No scopes him. And Cloud9 to pick up the series. Man, what a battle, though. Credit to Ecstatic for coming back into it. But Cloud9 avert a map one devastating upset. Good rebuttal off of a team retake into the A bomb site, and from there, Boomich gets activated. Agzal has a good game. This is fantastic from Cloud9, and that's just map one. They got some nerves going early on in, the, in this in this major. Just unbelievable work. Um, I can't believe it. Yeah, that 
they're going to think back on that five versus five round, like the bomb planter. That round is going to be living in their memories for a long, long time. Oh, ecstatic. I mean, every losing team yeah. always says it. You always hear the players say, you know, we had that game. We should have won yeah. it. Ecstatic had a real reason to have that faith that they actually had this game in the palm of their hands. That one retake broke everything wide open. We've got the desk to talk us through it. Richard Lewis, take it away. Thanks, Jace. Good to hear your voice again. Uh, wow, man. Welcome to the Major. Uh, it, it's yeah. going to be a hard game to analyze because there's so many emotions to even talk about before we get to the minutia of what happened in the game. You know, ecstatic. It was there for the taking. I yep. mean, it really was. Yeah, I think this is where we have to start. Like, even though we painted a very grim picture by Ecstatic and how they, on paper, had no chance to go up against the Ogres of Cloud9, it's not the reality of the game we saw. Yeah. We saw an Ecstatic that was ready to battle, coming back from an 0-6 start, which is supposed to be basically the doom and gloom scenario. Mm -hmm. A lot of resilience coming back into the game, tactically as well, very good ideas, knowing how to sort of fight for middle without over committing, putting a little bit of a wrench in the plan of Cloud9. So I, I want to start by giving props to Ecstatic because I think they do deserve a fair yeah. bit, but well, then there is a heartbreak. Said character, right? Yes, they did. Uh, and that, that is something which uh, we've been seeing time and time again from this team during the RMRs as well. And as you pointed out right there, Matthew, like, you know, 0 and 6 down. 0 and 6. 0 and 6 down. They had some good ideas. So I go back to round number three, their first buy round. They stacked four players towards B for that fast B hit coming in from Cloud9. They had some pretty good reads, but they were looking a little shaky. The individual, some team kills coming in, some kind of shaky sprays and whatnot. But once they switched on, once they're like, all right, guys, we have, we're here to play right now. They were one step ahead of Cloud9 the first half, and now they're winning like multiple rounds in a row. And Moses said it, we were talking about this as well in the green room. It's that one round, that 5v5 retake, where the call was perfect. They run into the A bomb site, they get the bomb down. It's a postman, and we're like looking at Cloud9, like, surely you save. You have no, no control whatsoever. Surely you save. The land is Apex of the favorites here. I, I think. We want to wait and see what a team like Payne are able to do. I think, as mentioned, it's quite surprising that they're even qualified yeah. for the event, but they're here, right? And, and this is where anything is possible. Dreams, dreams are made. Uh, you know, without without and being, destroyed and and destroyed. We uh, definitely saw a lot of heartbreak with teams who were unable to qualify at the RMRs. This is uh, a big deal to be a, a celebration of Counter Strike, but also, I guess, it's our equivalent of the World Cup, right? I think that's probably the best way to frame it. Yeah. Just not uh, with the, the national rosters as always, or not all of them. Apex, an example, but up against Pain Gaming, who are representing Brazil. Let's get this one started then. Not a lot of you two being invested into here for the T side of Pain. Got a smoke and a molly. Gonna make steps over towards Bridge. Very important to force the audibles. Smoke's in the sky. Deco up the ramp. So they're selling a lot of A presence, trying to look bigger than they are, Biggie Zero and Lux. Four players here. They've oh, done what they ooh. needed to do. No, they've definitely sold it. Surely this gap's forged now. Lux, if he could live, takes fights, confirms the sandbags are occupied as well. They haven't taken space. What are they doing? Now they are. Stiko's here. It's him. Pushing through. Bombs across. Stiko misses his opportunity there, and a HE could be well placed. But I'm going to finally Thalati chips away. NQZ down to half. Miss him a great shot, but Stiko down. Forced to watch. That's Anito soon to join him. Two HP. It's going to be sense. Trying to find a way back in. Good find on the Glock. Recovers that. Using them to great success. Finding their headshot. NQZ down. It's only Lux. It's a winnable. One versus two. That's Anito's low. Can't find them first. Headshot, and it's sense again. Three kills from the IGL. The young gun steps up for Apex's pistol. And he likes to make some noise. We've seen he's one of these elements of the team who gets fired up, yells an awful lot. So he uh, is trying to be the leader, not only in terms of the calls, but in how he conducts himself. And that will be the pistol round going in their favor. And that's even after what I would consider a successful fake. Mm. The decoy, the smoke, the opening kill, all going the way of pain. And it felt like they had breached in towards that B-bomb site a little bit late. They still get in the door, they still get the bomb down, and they still facilitate the second round by. This is one of the keys with the loss bonus where it's at. But they've gone AK heavy, haven't they? Yeah, that's cool, actually. They've, they've, they've managed to pull off three AK-47s with Kev. I don't love the absence of the head armor. It means that MP9 could ruin the day of NQZ. It might be telling of the pace that they're about to take. If they offer something quick, then definitely so. If they slow the pace down, allow the CTs to rifle through all of their utility, and then turn this ramp into a bit more of a protocol aim map, then I think that they might be able to negate that issue, at least for the most part. Still always cause for concern. Have a hamper smoke and a ramp lurk smoke, and then a redeploy of a deep yellow. 
and this is it. Even if you're not going to contest for these fights, Apex still need to seem somewhat threatening. You can't give this space over for free. Sasanito and Sense fighting in unison. Oh, Sense, dear. Hero of the last is down. Yeah, that's a big fun from Biggie Zera. Sasanito actually concedes and will give up that space. And you can see Biggie Zera is very quick to hoover up any of the potential. Confirms full control with a molly on sandbag. Sasanito cho choosing to stand and search. Doesn't have too much in the way of support. This is just a duel now. Head spotted. spotted. That's an Ito turns his tail, joins Nork towards Gap, getting swung on now from Lux. Lux run down. Good work from Nork. Finds himself an upgrade. Need another. Jacob good for it through the smoke. It's NQZ trying to hunt down Nork, hiding out on the gap position. Nice work from the Cowes Deeg. They will get that bomb planted. Hanging in the balance here. Yeah, low HP. Cowes cut down by Jacob. Deco spotting out NQZ in a very forward position. It puts a lot of pressure onto Nissim. Molly for the default. That will buy time, but he's going to have to take this duel. Deco! Oh, a ding, but not enough. Good attempt from Payne on the second round by. See, I, I don't know if he didn't believe the potency of his Molotov there. Yeah. Right, if he did, he knew that he had a buffer of about seven seconds. Uh, he, they would have had to have tapped again. He's gone searching. Gets the isolated fight, but is unable to connect it. And Nork does a good job staying alive. Slows them down getting into the site, and then that means the smoke fades. Jacob gets the kill on Carl. Cow is jumping away. That position from MQZ as well is not favorable. You can no. see, you can see because Steeko's further away from it. He can just see a like sliver of you. But th there's one of the the fact that they were jarring, it looks awkward for Sasanito playing ahead of the smoke wall, but slowing them down buys the buffer because they don't have a surplus of utility to replenish. Right. So it's worked out nicely for Apex. I see Nork lining up the yellow smoke. Will they do anything aggressive off the back of this? You can see that now landing deep down yellow can facilitate a bit of a walk down if they're interested. Sense and Sasanito. He's actually got a nice little flash lineup to get himself out and across. Then nade on the smoke in sync. Nice little move. I like that. Write that one down. Yeah, so you need to have as many of those as possible. Uh, that new dynamic is something that I don't think anybody's mastered yet. Mm. I think there's still a lot of room for growth in terms of do you want to use it offensively? Do you want to use it defensively? You know, is it more for the CT? Is it more for the T? Well, obviously, I think uh, situation is the key. But a heavy lean from Apex over towards the A side of the map right now. You can see Jacob even starting to cheat over. So with the radar, take a look. And well, this camera is even better. You can see them playing for information, searching forward. They need to win this fight over towards yellow and quick smart because the hit will be coming towards B. Big Yuzera. That's huge. Absolutely massive. Winning the frag onto Sense. And well, I was going to say, get away with it. No, Steeko hanging out on B with a brilliant double. Triple. Triple. Gets in QZ on the way out. Okay, well, round over, unless Lux has got a clutch in him. Punching in the code, at least get some cash to splash, but that'll be it. Apex, they can thank themselves. Stiko, the B anchor, gets a triple on the defense. That's more than he's worth there, and that actually is attesting to how well he just did. That is fantastic from Stiko. <laughs> the fact he gets the third is insane. Two was great. Two, I would have been more than happy with on the rotation back through, because as we were just highlighting, there was so much pressure from Apex to get this space over towards A. They have to focus on getting the trade. The rotation miles away, and you oh, can't... I, what? Yeah, so he must have been coming up through the smoke up the stairs. <laughs> he wasn't even aiming at him. <laughs> That's crazy, that one. Oh, man. That's I, why it didn't compute. No, it didn't. It couldn't process that but Stika, what a huge round he's just had i mean that was, yeah that was about to be pain gaming's first gunny now instead they're operating with some galils trying to get themselves off of the goose egg it's felt like everything's been a gun round so far we've had ak's galils yeah. galils again so this is that t-side economy getting the bomb down time and time again is going to continue to cause problems for apex jacob on high alert we'll, we'll oh. drop into a passive play lux dealt with over towards a trying to punish that reload Wow, nice find from Cowes actually controls this Galil into Jacob. Now they are starting with this uh, I like 3A. This from Nork. He was going to continue to aggress because uh, if, if it, it's it's awkwardly quiet, so like, well, okay, if they're here, they're here, but they're not. So look at this push. You can even see it on the X-ray. He's got Stiko behind him. I love this call. This is huge for information yeah. purposes. And Sansanito can work with this information. He now has a good idea that they're probably around this ramp. Spots the boost, knows at least two. Exactly. Quick, oh. math, quick maths. They're playing good counter here. They are indeed. This so, is massive. So is he going to be able to basically lock them? Is he, or does he play to contain now? Oh, he's actually spotted out the bomb on bridge. With Stiko onto Nissim as well, this aggression has been rewarded. 
And oh, whoa, their options are really not great, are they? What can you do here? Pain Gaming. Oh, had an opportunity. A bit of chip damage was available. Big Uzera on 50 HP to work with this. Two here on A. A forward position from Sansonito. Gets jiggled out. So good awareness from Big Uzera and Tawes, but just going to spray him down. Don't get him into the site. And no bomb plant this time. So they've been humbled. Yeah, there was residual cash left over. I believe there's more than enough now to get into, quote unquote, a full gun round. Okay. Red, this is the murky waters that we found ourselves in because of these plants, but let's find out in a moment's time. That was the easy opening. This was the one back, but again, I just love the... Ooh, Seeker. He's looking sharp. Yeah, and look, let's not mince words. Let's not... Uh, uh, let's let's be honest about this. Apex needed to bring him back to have core three yeah. so they could get themselves a spot in the RMR. Yes. So they brought him back out of necessity for the major circuit. But he's not going to just take that as, uh, you know, almost... Um a backhanded compliment, you know. Instead, he's taking it as an opportunity. Yeah, precisely. Always like Stiko. Good head on his shoulders. Yeah, 100%. And he's been individually grinding, trying to find his form or surpass his uh, previous form. And QZ on the AWP. This is what we were expecting to see. He's taken down Jacob, so already impact being felt. And this him, he's loud about this. So Steeko, high alert. Oh, and oh, Steeko no. wins the duel. This seems going to feel robbed. They were hoping to seesaw, but yep. you need to be successful in that type of a gambit if you want to have the seesaw as an option. So now it's not that they're going in blind. They know that He's damage was moving. done. Staying active, aren't they? Like, they are not going to be expecting this so quickly. After defending B, it's already behind them. Does he investigate the B bomb oh, site? It's so quiet. I'm a Steeko stan right now. The fact that he's going to be behind, they're already looking they're at... They're doing a double flank. Nork's with him. Well, Nork's investigating A, but... Okay. Is there any trigger discipline involved? No, you just take this frag. You just take this. No, you do. He might you be able do. to stop the plant. Oh, beautiful from Steeko. He will go down. Bomb disrupted. The double flank. No way you're expecting yeah. a double flank. Oh, yeah. It's only the flank. Hang on. And it's good work. Lux locks it in. Young oh. guns. Having fun, triple kill from Lux. You needed to convert that with how it started. Big Zero running up short and opening kill. NQZ grabs one back, and then it all gets a little bit unorthodox with the Steeko and Nork double push. Thought but they'd done enough with that. Yeah, if they were paired up, probably, but you could see they didn't exactly know. Here's the NQZ frag onto Jacob, rotating into trouble. But Lux, Oof. and you see them getting fired up, that Brazilian passion. Okay. Really not shy of making some noise, but look at how they've kept Apex's economy right where they want it. Oh, wow. The stack nades land on Sense's front door and down he goes. <laughs> <laughs> An all bullet to the toe. Uh, the nades didn't even matter, did they? Still, that's a, quite a bit of a one-two punch onto Sense. So operating at a disadvantage are Apex. NQZ holding the flank for now. Anticipating the potential for something more aggressive. Dressing the gaps in their opening spread. They're going to draw themselves back into the game quite quickly if they convert this one. Especially if they can do so cleanly. Sim has taken down Stiko's investigations towards the B stairs. Because Zara finds himself towards the gap and no Ooh. one occupying headshot. Notice how the AWP spam from far away. I don't think Sassanita will expect them already up short because of the AWP spam. Yeah, yeah see, so I the fact you. that they spam the AWP deep we were hey, shoot for me, right? I've got it's it's lulled Sassadito into a false sense of security. Yeah, it's round defining. Nork's gonna be picking up an AWP though. We'll see if he can save it. It's gonna be difficult to do considering the circumstances. And if you're pain, do you wanna wipe the board? Are you, are you gonna just allow this round to settle in and you grab your second, start to build a bit of a T-side economy, or do you wanna hunt? Well, Cowers will be the first to take a look, and he will have to tussle with Jacob. Nestled in quite nicely here towards the B lobby. Okay, let's stay with Cowers. Let's see how his uh, clears go. Because this angle is very... You're not going to be looking for it. Nice work, though. Did at least bait out Jacob, but... It's an upgrade for Jacob. He'll take the rifle. Oh, Ooh, they'll lose the orb. Nice find from Big Uzera. Nork shut down. Jacob finds himself that AK. Can he hold on to it? Not too long left in this round. And with three alive, pain... Go down. They're going to force the issue a little bit as the bomb explodes. Going wide, spot him out, and delete him. Big Uzera takes another frag, and they'll be happily back into this game. Vertigo starting competitively. You're going to be frustrated there if you're Jacob. Just like, hey, mate, just swing me wide. So you're jiggling everything. 
Just swing and well, oh. that was the shot from NQZ. A beautiful way to kick off the round. An important one here from Nissim. Uh, and especially the fact he gets revenge against Stiko, which he did fluff against and, a few rounds earlier. Uh, uh, embracing my pedantic hand, Chad, you said the uh, the nades were irrelevant. I think that was a shot in the leg, actually. Okay, I'm all just right, saying. all right, all right. <laughs> Five of them headed towards ramp. I see a P250 on the high and a 5.7. Not too much fun to be had here for Apex. Uh, and ooh, okay. We've got a, a little stack of Rooney. Different the elevations. Official terminology, I do believe. I believe so, I believe so. How many does this get? I reckon that UMP is about to farm some stacks. One. Oh, come on, Chief. Nasty little spread there. And they start to swing. They want to find Lux. Come on, what have you got? Oh, none. Absolutely nothing on the UMP, but it's information. I suppose maybe not nothing, as the B sign's open for business. As long as it just stays as the UMP that they've lost in this round, it almost feels like no harm, no foul. What about an AK? Oh, he holds on to it. A lovely spray, Cowes. Nort loses his AK eventually. Nork managed to chase him down, and that's certainly a nice prize. I'll take that through to the next if you can. If he can. Already starting to spread their wings are pain. Will Nissim expect this? He should do. Be aware it is a possibility. Big Zero dealing with Deco in the interim, and while Nork will get another kill. So at least adding frags to the tally. That's 300 bucks. It's a money game. Yep. It's a money game. And Feels no like need to invest. An important save as well, considering the money situation for Apex. Lost bonus about to get piped through into the bank. So everybody is going to be just under that 5k mark. I suppose the question is, are they going to try and facilitate an AWP? And if so, who goes lacking? Because you can see the finances right now. I think it's probably better for Nork just to operate considering the circumstances. And with the investments that have already come through, you can see nobody who could have been dropped can. And it, the thing is, if they could have, it would have meant they would have been a rifle with no armor. Mm. So you're not taking that. You, look, your AWP is good, but you're not taking that level of sacrifice. There's going to be a tactical timeout called from Apex. Now, Mitha, I believe he just signed a contract extension over there with Apex until 2027. Oh, okay. Maybe that's that sounds like a long time. I yeah. want to fact check that, actually. You fact check yourself while uh, we get ourselves into another round of play. Round eight in this uh, best of one second of the day. And, of course, two streams running simultaneously as well. If you've kind of accidentally stumbled into this broadcast and wondering where Ents is or where those other games are, you can go ahead and tune in to the main broadcast and you'll be able to check Ents versus Imperial, which is about to be going down. No, it is true. Mithra extends contract with Apex till 2027. Damn, okay. Yeah, that's a, a good amount uh, of job security. Yeah, right good there. play, good play. Do you help? Oh. Hmm, all right. Yeah, I like that. Nice Using all the props to get the mollies in. Well, clearing out wood and now they'll boost, opening up multiple different sight lines in towards this side. Stiko, will this catch you off guard, my friend? Yeah, he has a smoke. I think by design, uh, he's ready to bail himself out of the potential for a Molotov, which is uh, surely going to be coming his way. I'm more worried about Jake and Alex. Stiko buys his time, gets away with it. They're not ready for him. Stiko, only the one. Jake, um, he did manage to post himself a frag, recovers another smoke, Lux. That is a gift. That's going to lock these CTs out. They've got two more. One on Lux, one on NQZ. They can keep this replenished. Uh, they're going to try and force the issue. Catanito, audible. Lux, hiding in. Oh, oh dear. Run past him. He's going for a round they've winner. They've past him. All the backs are turned. Apex not ready. And Lux only the one. Good reaction out of sense. Orpal connect. NQZ has pulled them into this round, confirming it essentially as Nork is scarpering to save. Oh, that could have been from Lux to Delux if he took them all down right there. That would have been quite the play. And like I said, he's going for the round winner. He's trying to be cheeky with it, trying to make sure that he can remove any possibility by being in that back line, using the smoke against them. But regardless, they'll pick this one up and we will be leveling the playing field at 4-4. So Lux has had some impact. That rifle round over towards the B site earlier on in the piece where he had three big kills. Now essentially grabbing the round winner right there, sending them packing. And it's interesting the way that Stiko chose to operate here. Like I said, I was more worried about Jacob because of the fast pathing up wood. And Stiko waited enough ticks in the molly that they thought it was clear that they looked away from his position. So the fact that they were under that much pressure and still went two for two, essentially. Yeah. It was a decent job. It was pain with the finish. 
Money, well, loss bonus for Apex flowing. Fully invested. The utils light. Uh, this is a tough round to pull off. You, you're going to have to hope that the fights come your way because if you get whittled down, you're in a really rough position. And a lot of your utils on Jacob. So if he goes down in this opening mid fight, you're really going to be hard pressed. So two of them are coming towards this mid fight. Jacob in the off angle. Oh, oh, he's quick switching and leaving. Just as he comes back, though, it's Good one. Trade. And Big Uzero with a necessary trade takes him down. And space. Uh, look oh, at this. Oh, the perfect timing for Lux is this window of opportunity. They just left gap. They just left. And now Lux slinking forward. This is held by Tatsunito's angle. He's got so much to worry about, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he's getting, could be getting crawled on from multiple different angles. How aware are the Brazilians? Oh, he's just had a look. I think Tatsunito's timing might favor him. Just as Lux looks away, it's a messy oh, spray. No. He's made a meal of that one. Oh, that one leaves a mark on oh, your that's mental. that's a disaster for Tatsunito. You, <sighs> your head starts to question everything you know about aiming after that. Oh, man, he fully committed to the spray. A couple of taps, just a couple of taps. Yeah, that range. Okay, sense. He can clean things up neat and tidy if it wasn't for NQZ on the AWP. Now, not ready for Big Uzera. You can see Stiko completely caught unawares. The fight's on all fronts. It feels like they're everywhere. People are calling A, people are B. Stiko, in the meantime, gets kind of uh, loses Big Uzera. Well, uh... Yeah, I was, I was going to come up with a cheeky reference there, but uh, this map, you want to keep all your options open. Uh -huh. You want to have your fingers in as many pies as possible, Alex. And they had all opportunities, A, B, and mid, yeah. on speed dial. Keep your options open. I think they had a different phone for all of the, their mistresses right there. Yeah, but, the burners. Uh, everyone's picking up right now. Yeah, at the same time. Damn. Lovely impact. And you said Big Uzara, you know, this uh, This was a name that a lot of people had high expectations for. He really impressed uh, in 2023. Well, but when he picked up the in-game leader mantle, it wasn't by choice. It was because PKL was taking a break. And then that's when Payne started to look their best. It was uh, a team that I know Jason, for example, was someone who was quite excited about. But the fact that, like, look, these, these names that we're seeing on their team, it's not that we haven't heard, especially, I think, Lux, right? Because you try and keep your finger on the pulse. Right. And you, uh, the thing is, when you hear people from a region hyping up players from that region, you always, I don't want to say take it with a grain of salt, but it's hard to measure, yeah. right? Because you, you don't know how they're going to go at the upper echelons of Counter-Strike in the most pressure environments. And right now, well, the likes of NQZ and Lux of having some good impact, and Big Zero has been great on entries or trades, it's taking space. He's got 11 kills. Yeah. Tatsunito, that, as you said, is going to kind of leave a mark on his mental, feeling like that's a, a guaranteed frag for, for any professional rifler. Backwards turn, Lux converts. An interesting angle adopted here from Jacob. Uh, especially a player like Tatsunito, who is normally quite good in that department. Yeah. Like we're talking like an in-game leader who had that whiff or, or something along those lines. So the pressure is being applied simultaneously. Middle. Not B, which is where three of the CTs are uh, uh, are leaning towards. What is this from Nissim? I can't explain that one. Well, he's worried about a mid-push mid yeah. to flank. Yeah, but they have to go. Their options have been removed. Oh dear. All those numbers they had, go they away. lost their phones. Go away. And quickly. There's already four of them here. There's no flash or anything, though, Alex. There's no flash or anything. It's a fumble brewing. Whereas getting the bomb down would be nice. That's even better. NQZ takes down Jacob, the AWP in support. Stiko, this is a fast flank. Maybe, oh, yeah, now he is. Swung on, he can maybe go for the transfer. It's only the one. Lux will hold on. And now things falling back into place for Payne. Spam through the smoke gets a little scary. NQZ is low as well. You really have to be careful against that MP9. In the absence of a kit. Sends the Nork. Losing their uh, hopes of a fifth here. Six on the half is fantastic from Payne. This is a phenomenal start. Considering the circumstances, they lost the pistol. They kept being able to buy back in. Nork's going looking for damage. And he's the one to cop the bullet to the brain. This is very good work from Payne. I was very worried about that. You know, we talk about the uh, the ramifications and echoes of, of a round. Sure, towards the end of the half, it, it doesn't play as big of a part, but... Uh, I think Nissan would have been punched in the air if that trans tra uh, translated into I an Apex win. I don't think that's something they'd practice, right? It feels like it's gone, hey, mate, uh, mid, mid push is open, yeah. and he's gone, 
well, <laughs> it's like he was holding oh, stairs. Now. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm going to stay committed to this position. Poor lad, poor lad. Uh, I mean, yeah, bailed out by his squad. Uh, and that's just uh, the team game of Counter-Strike in action. Second pause called by Mitha. He wants to have a quick 30 seconds on the mic, trying to uh, recover this half. A 6-6 six, six certainly could be serviceable, but already pain feeling pretty happy with the uh, with the result. It has gotten away from them, though, hasn't it? Yeah. It's happened quite quickly. Now, uh, money for pain, considering where it's at, if they get a plant in this round and still lose it, they should be sitting pretty for another full gun run. And even if they lose, it should be enough for Galil. So there's no issues in them staying threatening for the final round of the half, regardless of the outcome about to unfold on our screens. Nork has brought out his AWP. Does mean he's had to forego utility. Heavy lean towards B, AWP of NQZ. Looking for a fight. You can see he's ready for the jump nade or jump molly, and that is actually what transpired, but wasn't able to catch him on the timing. Lux with some space over towards A. Oh, he's missed. He missed the molly. That one's gone off the map. A bit of a firework. Here we go. Get to see Norks AWP in action. I don't fancy Lux's chances on the fade. Here we go. And perfect. Nork converts onto Lux. Pressure applied to the Bianca once more. And how does Stiko? Handle this one, has got some support. Nate chips away, working on 43 points of health and he chooses to stand his ground. Backing away further now, ready for the swing on white box. Gets away, Jacob, the fresh mag. That's Anito, cooking up a fast flank. Is Nissim ready for this? He is, yes indeed, an equalizer. Now the pendulum can swing. Ooh. You've just lost your Bianca. Jacob now alone on the B side. Where do you go? You've got 55 seconds. Get cleared. He is going to be cleared by Big Uzera. And down goes another player on B. Big Zero's awareness in a lot of these scenarios has looked sublime. And this started with a man advantage for the Nork AWP. Now they're, well, I don't want to say to, not two to the good, two to the bad. Yeah, two to the bad indeed. And they're actually just back at T-Spawn, repositioning. It does have potential to, to go get awkward, uh, given the fact that we've only 28 and counting. If Big Zero goes down to sense, the rest of them are going to have to be revealed. And it will be a beast split. They are splitting into the I only two remaining this. players. Yeah, there is a world where Nork can close this out, recover a two on four, and the AWP in the feed. No time for anything else, lads. And already, Sense is a problem. Sense in the clutch. All he has to do is stop the plant. All he has to do is stop the plant playing around the smoke. Covered by NQZ, loud about this. The AWP fires off the shot, baits it out, looking for the double. Can he come up clutch? Sense this would be huge. Three bullets, not in a rush. Composes himself, swings out. Nissim will find it. A triple kill from Nissim to save Pain Gaming from a very uncomfortable 2 on 4 Yeah, it got tense, but you mentioned it. They let that clock run down. They were committed to that one option of the B split. Fortunately, able to have the trades fall in their favor. And now have won out the half. Eight is a possibility for the Brazilians. And this is something that Pain have been very aware of after the initial foray of rounds. Apex within the early stages of this were exploiting mid pushes down ladder and flanks. And now, every single time, Payne have been on a high alert for exactly that. Sassanito getting caught in maze towards lower, trying to cause an issue or two. And they're going to call a tactical timeout of their own. So Payne, they want to take the whole hog here, see if they can grab eight before they do head into that half-time break. Oh, my goodness. And Sassanito, you, you discussed his flanker and their awareness of it, but he has had a very tough first and opening half for his uh, major affair. One frag to boast. And you can see the round recap as well. It's just been pain gaming one-way street right now. Well, they leave with eight yeah. Apex in damage control mode. Four in a row, which were all hotly contested because of plants and buys, and then now seven consecutive. Yeah, Pain have looked like the better side right now. And the fact that Stiko and Sense are at the top of the scoreboard, that's uh, a, a sign of the times for Apex. Shouldn't be the case. It's like that one round where Stiko had a three kill yeah. over towards B. It, it shouldn't have been three. I think two was very hard for. Well, the third, a bit of a miracle. That's ballsy. I mean, uh, fair play to Sense. He feels like he has to be the difference maker, tucking himself in to this forward smoke. This is, I mean, this is a one and done. Gizera is going to overlook. He's not expecting anyone to be that ballsy, and Sense will get away with it. Surely he's going to be punished by this AWP to slow clearing him. Nice work from NQC to claw it back. Gets away. Four on four established. Lurk smoke to play around. That's Anito. If you've got any chance of a second frag here. You know the AWP was uh, hunting. He's not scared. He doesn't shy away from the engagement. He's open to receive. 
backing away upon the fade. Doesn't look comfortable though, does it? They've parked Nork over towards Sandbag, a noisy rotation from Sassanita away, and Painter gonna hit the brakes again. A key point in the round at 45 seconds is the sheer belt of utility that Painter holding on to. Multiple smokes, mollies, and flashes, and that really could spell disaster for Nork. He does not have a smoke. With this many mollies left, I would expect Payne to molly the sandbag position, especially the fact they're giving it away that they're here. Yeah, swinging through. Nork, oh wow, he gets two. Great impact. That is exactly what the doctor ordered. And QZ on the AWP. Molly towards the headshot position, but he's long gone already. Tanta needs to reposition. Bombs on seconds. his way in, you need to be planting, and QZ sprayed on down, round is done, and Apex, they will find a little bit of something to celebrate towards the end of that half five. They can work with five. Have to thank Nork for that one. Yeah. And they did molly him. It still gets away with a double. Impressive. It was like a perfectly placed Molotov. Nork just very proactive. It was almost before Lux could get his gun out, he was already getting shot down. And it's one of those things as well that you're going through the paces and you're throwing that utility, but uh, do you actually believe that there's a player there? Makes all the difference. This is how it started as well, this forward position. This is what we're talking about. Lovely little transfer Jacob to the enjoyed head. watching that. Yep. <laughs> He's in, Jacob's enjoyed all of that. <laughs> That's your boy. And uh, 10 frags in the half from him. So, uh, yeah, just Satsunito, the only omission in the double digits. But uh, they recover that half to an extent, considering how it started. It was going so well for Apex. Pen Gaming going to be boasting seven as they change to the defense. Yeah, Satsunito really needs to get activated. He's going to play a very important role on this T side in terms of being quite lurky. He does um, take that role quite seriously. Uh, you'll, you'll see him operating quite late into rounds. Mm. But smoke and a couple of flashes. Loud bridge steps and then cut noise. Jewel Beretta's to lock down short in the hands of Cowers. So bridge steps and then quickly gather mid. Well, we have seen this team before, Alex, uh, like to exploit mid-gaps, right? That's something that we've covered off with Apex games previously. We're now looking to do the same on the pistol. First to take contact will be Big Yuzera. This is going to be such a favorable duel. If four Glocks start swinging, that P2K has to hit the first bullet and then get out of there. Smoke on Guardian. Big Yuzera, one, that's it. One shot, one shot opportunity. Forced away, front delay. Good flash turn now, and the pressure onto Elevator is a lot. Oh, and good clean clicks. Big Uzera racks up a double. And it's just falling apart for Apex. Lux pushing through, finds one with the dual Berettas. Nothing here for Tatsunito. One on four. Got to clear out a lot here. And the angle from Lux was good for some damage. Just unloads his magazine. And Payne will take the pistol as well. Big Uzera might be my favorite Brazilian player. Yeah, I think he's he's fast growing in everyone's uh, expectation. I just love the decision, the way like the way he made that call. He's gone, okay, I'm going to rotate heaven. I'm not going to bother fighting out through uh, the Z towards elevator. Yeah. I'm going to let them pass because now I know that they have 180 degrees worth of angles to have to clear. Like I, just just it just his decision making. It's great to see. This is pain poised for the ninth round, considering the Apex purchases unable to invest in something that they would be comfortable with as far as the four spies, no plant, no chance. At least that's what Sense is thinking. This is not the way that Apex would have been hoping to kick off their major campaign. So we'll just hurry up and wait to round number 14. We all have mentioned we do have the action going down on that main stream. Not sure how that one concluded. I'll be getting a bit of action over towards B. This is the Chatty B play-by-play. -play. Nissim starts down four in hand, steps out. He takes down the first. Nico's in the grave. Actually, they got a kill. Yeah, they did. They did get a kill. But that's all. That's all they got. And actually, you know what? MP9's getting the frags and recovering uh, any of rifles and utility. Probably not too shabby. I'll be happy with that. Oh, some well, extra cash. I don't want to give the result for the mainstream. People can go and check it out. No, we don't. We don't like giving away spoilers, you and I. No. We've been scorned Too once or times. twice before, so we'll let you find it out on your own accord. But uh, their second match has kicked off, and that is Ents versus Imperial. A more Brazilian Counter Strike on your screens on this Sunday afternoon. Got Gamer Legion versus Amcal up next on the mainstream. 
and uh, you got Imperial in your pickups? Lin Vision. Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Maybe I should have. Fallen's major runs not uh, not selling you anything. Oh. Okay, this has gone very quickly in one direction. Two opening frags for Apex. Leaves Nissim with a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He's got Steeko and Sense knocking on that B door. If he pushes, I don't think he's ready for Steeko. Oh, he's clearing. Yeah. It's just not a favorable CT fight. Ever. <laughs> so you have to pip the gap perfectly, whereas he's going to have all the advantages in the world. And a sound cue uh, just for good measure. Nice one back from Lux, but I mean, that's a pretty much uh, the... Only frag they'll have to celebrate here as they know the B-side's open. I'll be able to wander in and get that uh, that sixth round cooking. Well, good that Apex haven't uh, had to stomach another seven round drought yep. because at that point the game would have been over. So um, they have been able to bounce back in the early stages of this second half. Now, NQZ and Lux, can you hold on to your rifles because we need to take a bit of an inventory right here, right now. Lux will be able to drop a rifle into the next round if he survives. Big Zero will be able to buy one of its own. And NQZ could drop something a little bit lighter. So as far as the force bite, well, at, at that point, it's not really a force bite for pain. They should be able to get at least four rifles to keep themselves threatening and not allow things to run away from them completely as far as the economy is concerned. But Jacob with an opener and Sense with another one back and looking a bunch of ducks in a row. Remember, at the start of the day, don't duck with me. Keep on playing 2 1 2. There you go. So they've just defaulted to start this round, and the fights have come their way. You can see those two initial exchanges within the first 20 seconds of the round, and just how easy that one is for Stiko, who's able to worm past the LOS. That's line of sight for those of you playing at home for Nissim. Damn, bro. Yeah, is it these a, MMO... Uh, a good uh, TTK there for <laughs> Stiko. Yeah, the TTK was quick on the LOS. I don't think Jacob's going to be uh, so lucky this time. Finding an opening frag. I say that. The CTs are vying for control. Smokes won't last forever. They just whistles past Jacob's head, but those bullets did connect. He's got 7 HP as he does... Managed to get away. I leave Nork responsible for containing any ramp aggression. Three CTs leaning on that side of the map. Sends with Steeko. Going to continue this 2-1-2 two, two as discussed. The round needs to start taking shape at this point, right? So coming through the pipe will be the information. What mollies are used? What smokes? You know, where have Ooh. we seen them? What type of setup does it look like they're going for? It's a nice smoke to be thrown by Steeko. They've tried to counter it with a smoke of their own. That's the last smoke. Yeah. Actually peeking with the smoke, Lux. Tries to confirm the final uh, target. And yeah, Sense, he was ready for that. A little peek too far. Punished this young IGL. Pulling his troops in pursuit of a seven. Should just finish A, right? Do the smoke's backside, get the mollies in play, and away you go. This should be good for Apex to finish the round. Yeah, they're trying to get ahead of the play. You can see there was a touch of aggression there. They didn't push on seconds. that flash. It's delayed them. The smokes surely have to be leaving their hands now. They're going to go for a double push on Gap. This is held by Sense. This is the frag. That is the start. Now a second required. They are pushing on towards the side. The backwards turn. Steeko arrives. That should be enough. High impact frags. Bomb. Plant with Ooh. a second to spare. <laughs> Bloody hell. Wow. Hang on, Nissim, by finding that frag so quickly, has confirmed that the rest are likely in front of him. He's got to just keep running, not faffing around, not messing around. It's not planted for them. They might get panicked. They might get a little worried. Oh, a different universe, perhaps. Apex will take it. Oh, yeah, it was an important round. I imagine if it went down with Sassanito not planting the bomb in time, though. It, wanting to get the safe side plant in, that came too close to call. It's also almost the uh, Nissim GTR over the finish line. Yeah. <laughs> I know nothing about cars. No, but it sounded right. Thank you. Yeah, I will say that Steeko's like decision making and awareness of when he wanted to show himself as that second prong on Gap, it was just part like just as those two players were turning their attention to sight, he managed to be there uh, and continues to be impressing. This is not going to be too impressive for Pain, just an economical.
And in a dream world, they would avoid that Mac 10 that Jacob has intentionally bought to farm up some extra $600 kill rewards. See how far he gets with this one. Just gonna be pausing. Waiting for any uh, of the CT maneuvers. Is there a, you know, a cheeky flash play coming into the mix? Doesn't seem to be the case. Instead, Jacob ah, loses out on his Mac 10. Three. Just go B. A wise Hampus once said. Yeah, and Norky's not going to be playing any silly games here. I was very interested. I'm watching the minimap as that was unfolding as we were in eyes with Jacob. But this is what I was looking at. Sasanito was searching middle on his own so proactively. He was already out mid before Jacob had taken that initial buy. Yeah, he has gone down to the uh, recovered Mac-10 though, but recovering that AK is a different challenge altogether. You can see Nissim's trying his best, but Nork should have him here. And it leaves Lux with just a Mac-10. If there is an AK, you can see he might give it a look in. Yeah, they're, right. they're exiting B stairs, so he's gonna get away. away with it. He's gonna get away with it, yeah. All right, you take something. that. Well, game back on, just a one round difference at this juncture, Apex. Having to do it the hard way on the T side, grinding through. But I think when you have these type of matchups, especially with a regional team like Payne, you know, you're going to be watching the demos, you're going to be prepping. But this is where the best of one conversation really comes in. And it is hard to adjust with less rounds as well. So, look, I'm not saying that that's why the score is like this. I think Payne have played some fantastic Counter Strike up until this point. But Apex get to settle in now and set the tone on their terms of the T side. These matchups were known ahead of time by a considerable yes. margin, right? Yeah, like yeah. a couple of weeks. Uh, and if that's the case, you also expect that both teams to have done an advanced level of homework. And, and that's where it comes into play of what are we going to see that's new, mm. right? Because the default to the positions that teams hold, you tend not to expect that to change. That's what I call color by uh, number counter-strike, right? Like in the sense that, okay, we see this guy on this part of the map, but he's the B defender, but he's over towards A. Okay, maybe that means B's free, right? Mm -hmm. like just the, the basics of that. So everybody should be well drilled and then it's going to come down to the flow of the game, right? Where have they decided is our weakness? Where have they decided is their strength of what they want to attack? And then how does that flow into future rounds that are being called? Well, for sense, he's literally just called defaults. So they're essentially allowing the tone to be set by pain on the CT side and then responding to the round from that point forward. This looks a whole lot more like an A play. So if you make it look like a default when you open up this round, you can finish a lot swifter. But apparently they've seen enough. More and more U2 liberally applied on either side of the server to stall out information, essentially. Oh, Kawas is committed. No, nope. get himself away safer. Towards the gap position, Satsunito now attending to the potential of mid. Oh, and his own again. Yeah, open the door. Oh. That's very unfortunate. <laughs> That's just a spam. That's a smoke spam from Jacob, and it's taken down one of the A defenders. wonder if he's caught a glimpse of him there through the yellow gap, because it was through the smoke and the wall. This has actually bought an opportunity for Sasadito to activate his own discretion. Oh, that was his window of opportunity onto the mid fight. And he will be punished for it. Nissim, good awareness, good headshot. Oh. <gasps> Do you think Uzera's gonna get misinformation here or he could catch Nork? Okay, but Nork was not ready for that, not expecting that. And yeah, yes, big Uzera, he considered it. Knows the potential for the gap slip. Jacob, out of the smoke now emerges. 20 seconds. Big Uzera, he's ready for this. Good damage, but Jacob, good precision. Finds the headshot. Is there anything left in this round for Apex? There's no nade or molly to stall out the plan. Smokes Ellie. Surely they get ahead of this. Lux. Ooh, chipped away at. Could be awkward. NQC's found the frag. There's no time. There's no health. And look how that one feels. Pain Gaming. An important round to win. And it started with a loss. They lost Cowers to Jacob and they recover the round. They're firing the belly right there and a risky maneuver from Big Uzera. They already had a number advantage that happened off screen at the same time. So he was already committed to that play. Very fortunate for him that he gets away with one. That's Sasanito again. And it looks like a lot of spray and pray from Sasanito. You can see he had committed to that duel and it wasn't tap, it wasn't burst. It was hold down mouse one, a little bit that like from Lux. But they deal with the problem. They deny the plant. 
They get themselves up to double digits. You win one more of those, and the bank balance oh, is down. Pace, pace, charging. Tatsunito, a direct approach, and it's going to lead to a four on four. Orp tends to the aggression. Kawe's big frag needed that. He's away with just a scrap of hell down to the flames and the spread from Sense. Smokes her up, pressure is on. The bomb disconnected from the pack. Where is Stiko? So with all of that territory, those smokes invested, they're not going to leave with a, with a bomb plant and a post plant. Here comes Nissim. Just as Stiko starts to join his boys. Yeah, and, and this is problematic. Nissim down the ladder behind. That was Stiko's responsibility to watch that flank, but he's had to be called towards the site. The timing on Nissim's flank is everything. Yeah. Holding his smoke pushes here. PZ has a good idea that they are going for the plant now. Look how much room he's getting on the flank. How quickly does he tend to this? This frag is everything and he's clean with it. Takes down Sen. Seiko next victim, Nissim. Gonna do it all on his own if he's not careful. Nork in the clutch, a one on three. Faked out, Big Uzera. Holding for this push. But they're gonna need to touch it again. They're gonna need to tap it. Both lining up for him, but good cover. Ah! Big Uzera will convert. And Pain Gaming, back to back, high impact rounds as they look to extend their lead. That's like the thing right there is we don't know what the call is, but if you're going to go a little bit more heads up towards A, which was quite clear, Sassanito was all in. After the first, he was full commit for the second, just trying to scuttle up a bit of space there. And the bomb being so disconnected, I'm not saying take it up the ramp with you on entry, but have it at least in elevator room. Yeah. Because Stiko, as the flank, you could see how much room he had to give up to bring the bomb towards the site. It put Nissim in a fantastic, but he was undetected until he's already up towards mini ramp. Yeah, and that's bad. That's a big, big problem. And a different universe, you know, those smokes are up. Stiko still has the flank, and that bomb is is able to convert off of those smokes in that space. Instead, 8-11, hold on. Pain Gaming, if they can take these Galils down, Apex might be starting their campaign in Copenhagen with a loss. And this is such a low util round from Apex. They've used sound to at least try and buy them something. One smoke, it's just they've used it now. What's that, like a Lurk smoke ramp? Just peeking dry into the AWP. What else can you do in the absence of utility? Well, if they've done their homework, they should expect Sassanito. At least one more. Yeah, you're right. Does he flick into this? Is that not an easy shot to hit? Ooh, gave it a go. NQZ down. Sassanito with an equalizer. Irresponsible is Nissim. Uzera anticipating the railing angle. This has become... New problem, the new smokes, the, the old lineups, you can see their head over the railing. He has to be very careful. I'm gonna try and play the fade here. Big Uzera needs help. Jiggles out. Oh, spots him out. Nice work from Big Uzera. How has he gotten that so clean? A headshot onto Sense. Repels the invaders. They're still on B stairs, making no secret about it. They can't flush him out. They don't have the nades to do so. He's got the support, there's smokes, there's oh. spam. Nissim takes down Sassanito at 12. Oh my god, they could have finished it. Yeah, they are going to take 12, and they'll take it by force. There's nothing here for Nork. Absolutely nothing. And this time, no plan. The oh. next round is going to look the same. Yeah, this is going to be bleak. Still getting the info through. Yeah, yeah. NQZ wants his AWP. And this is a feel-good moment. I said Big Zero stock's going to be through the roof if they can continue the type of performance they had at the RMR. Well, this is great guns against one of Europe's representatives here in the opening stage. And it's been a team effort. Everybody's yeah. had their moments. Lux within the early stages of the first half. Big Uzera throughout. NQZ hitting some tidy shots. Nissim has started to pick up the pace a little bit. Cowers with some important kills throughout. And the third tactical timeout called for Apex. Dude, look at that buy. Yeah, and I was surprised they went for the purchase in the last. They could have just limped in with some upgraded pistols, which would have definitely given over 12, sure. sure. But then they could have had a full buy. So it's Galil with no U2 into Tech 9 with Nates. They both suck. Yeah. Nah, back-to-back -back rounds where you kind of feel like you've lost before you even begin. Galil with no nades into an orb. Like, for Jacob, he just feels like, well, obviously. He's like, you know, like, <laughs> you know, as soon as he dies, he goes, oh, there's an orb holding mid. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, yeah. and I've gone out dry. Yeah, here uh, I go. Well, of course I have, because I only have Galil. And we didn't have any nades to try and cause any chaos yeah, no. across the map. Hindsight, I know it's 2020, <laughs> but I'm just saying it doesn't seem like the play. Uh, just very limited options. Tech nines, dude. Deagles. It's a, and it's a, a fast day. Go on then, Sense, through the flames. And, oh, a chance. He did have a chance. Two or three clicks of the Tech 9 before Kawes managed to shut him down. In gaming, four frags away from starting with the win in these best of ones.
Can re-smoke towards the ramp. Lux to flash and flush those attackers away. Uh, this is dire. Yeah. You need a miracle from one of the Apex individuals to pull you through this. Somebody has to get a multi-kill or a banger of a deagle shot. So that's Nito's really going to lurk mid on this. And I love the aggression from Cowers. Well, this is it. Yeah, one by one. I can't believe he's... Yep, all right. Well, pack her up, pack her in. Let the campaign begin for Pain. Yeah, man, Pain Gaming. They have proven a point. A statement of intent from Pain Gaming. Not everyone having high expectations for this roster. A lot of unknown names and unknown entities. Blown up in the sky. Yeah, then you would have had to save a flashbang, and you feel like a real dickhead saving a flashbang. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can throw it anyway, just for <laughs> fireworks. Just make it look good. Listen, how often do people like you know how many how much how many dollars do we shoot into the sky every New Year, Fourth of July, or whatever it is? You know. True. <laughs> you make a compelling argument, Anders. Yeah. I can't battle with the fireworks angle. That's what I'm saying. Or when you're in the club, Jason, just pouring champagne into the sink, you know? That is my favorite thing to do. Yeah, I've seen you do it. Buy an expensive bottle of champagne at the club and pour it into a sink. While the poor people are watching. <laughs> Please, I need food. Or I don't champagne. know why they're in the club, but... I don't know why they're looking for food in, in the champagne no, It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, a little bit of a slaughter going on here. The Galil's having a field day. Three kills. Goofy, I think, running under the side in the desperate hope that he could keep someone close to the bomb for them to go up with. It's not going to be successful, but it's worth the attempt. What have you know? Nice. All right, back to smiles. Yeah. Let's get the celebrations going. Yeah, exactly. It's a I party miss, over this there. This is the thing that I miss the most about Brazilian Counter-Strike. Sure. Like, all the confidence kind of went out of the scene for out, at some point. Uh-huh. But when it was good, like, when they were really winning, it was, it was thriving. so sick. Yeah, fun to watch. It for was. For sure. Well, Imperial's going to try and get some of that magic back. Down by two, six to eight, into the first gun round. Hades has his off. It's glass cannon. No armor, no utility for Hades. That it's... smoke is going to force him back. It's fairly winnable at the moment. Noe and 14 kills, Henny at 13. Now they've got a couple of individuals that are fired up. They're only two rounds behind. Especially if they can win this first round here. Hence, finally some rifles are out across the map. Putting a lot of pressure on the middle. It's part of the fact there's just one player on the Imperial side that's really pushing it, but... That's a cool smoke from Kyler. Flashbang in is going to force a shot from Hades, so Imperial has a little bit of information of where the AWP is positioned. They have mid control up till the double doors. Decency has engaged with Glaive and doesn't really have a whole lot of HP, but they're committed to this A bomb site. So many Molotovs raining down. That's a good way to try and beat the AWP. It's just making it impossible to really stand anywhere with all the flashbang around the corner as well. Yeah, and Hades, they, they know there's only a couple of places you could play from. They burned or smoked every other part of the site out. Now he's still going to get a kill somehow. Tries to go for the flick, but he gets swung upon by Phelps instead. And that's enough. I think that's the round. Yeah, Imperial had so much runway. Look at all... Oh, they're, they're going to go for this. They're going to go for this. They're challenging from camera. Glaive is very committed. They're boxed in from behind as well. Good kill from Glaive, but Decenty is going to come in and ruin everything. First kill is his. Second kill is even easier. And Dia, you might just want to grab Hades up and, and run. Surely, yes. No kit. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have the kit, you could have you could have smoked it off and tried to see if you can go for the defuse, but... Where is that AWP? All right, here we go. They're going to know, and they're already flanking him. Decent he's right there. On top, jumping down with a headshot on Deha. That's the orb stolen back. It's a sick round out of him. Yeah, and that's that's really nice. Despite, I mean, two players at that A-bomb site, Hades was forced out of the site by a Molotov. Deha just shaking his head. A perfect flashbang off the pillar. Look how blind Kyler is. Can't do anything close up with the SMG. And Imperial take advantage of that real estate. There, there's no more resistance at the stairs, no resistance at the jump up. They get so aggressive towards Beach, where Hades is just trying to survive with the AWP and wait for his teammates. Early days on defense for Ents, not looking great. First gun round, they get battered and bruised. And Imperial on the verge of tying it up. 
Yeah, it's uh, developing into a, a serious concern for the man. One round separating the two. I think that the extent of the execute from even outside of the A-bomb side, you could see, I think Hades had to run away from two different Molotovs. Mm -hmm. he couldn't play the traditional high ground because there was a smoke there. So they don't, they, they don't have to check a lot of places. Once they take the first fight, they kind of realize, okay, you can only be in like one or two places. And it could have, it could have gone differently. Remember, that was a glass cannon off with no utility. Ooh, Hades, oh, I thought maybe he could have doubled that up. But if Hades has utility with that AWP, he can potentially smoke the Molotov, right? He can put yeah. it out inside the bomb set. He can still play that position, still keep Kyler in a decent enough fight. He could have smoked a main at any point during that, denied access to him, made that execute harder to pull off. It's just the lack of resources is so limiting to what he could do with the AWP. So eight to eight is gonna be the score line. Next round, we're gonna get Ents back with weapons. I would be surprised if we didn't see a timeout going into this next round. Yeah, if, if nothing else, just try and cool down Imperial a little bit so they didn't get all the momentum going. Mylar's walked on that. Looking to find a last player at the last second here, but they see it coming. They're going to be able to get rid of him. It's all around well played as the game is tied up. Eight to eight. Imperial. Not rolling over too easily in this game. Still doing the work on the side. They've got so much money built up on the Imperial side. Look at the cash. Henny with 7,200, an op in hand. Picked up from Hades, a free op that he gets in this half. So here we go, round 17. This time Hades brings his off over to the B-bomb site. Molotov is going to prevent any aggression that he might have wanted to bring out. Flashbang is going to prevent him from seeing Henny, who's now got a deep angle with the AWP. It's dangerous. No flick connecting there for Henny. How many people they've got here, Rens? If they can't hold the bomb site with four people, they're in a lot of trouble. And Vinny's, I don't think they'll expect Vinny. I think they would have expected Smoke and Dark. Now they'll know, now they'll know there's presence there. Good flick over from Hades. Knows there's one more, it's Phelps. USP is out and Hades finds some safety inside Dark. Eliminates that half of the attack and now things are under control. He got the call and he knew that he was maybe a little bit tagged up and he just went for it. That is so bold, again. Really entertaining player to watch, but there is a world in which that backfires and the, and the round is back on for Imperial. They're going to go for it immediately. Yeah, it was almost like Hades felt so much pressure from B-Main. He thought they were going to be coming through that smoke. Glaive gets one kill through the smoke, so maybe that held them back. But uh, that's just a nice stop overall, but a little bit of a risk taken. You're right from Hades. Which I don't mind. I mean, you gotta you got to try something, right? They're starting to fall a little bit behind in this game. Well, Decent T is going to listen to some music. I don't know why he's enjoying the vibes too much on the camera, but... No, he's not dancing. Saving the weapons, though, knowing that Ents don't have the money to hunt. That's a good round for Ents, though. Four players survive, so they can build up some cash. <laughs> Beautiful. I wish you could see Jason dancing at home, but... Yeah, I'm dancing. It's a good time. Okay, a one round lead. It's really not that much. Timeout called. The economy is going to be the really deciding difference here for, for, for either team, but I think especially for Ents, the way that they are right now, if there is a scenario where they get reset once again, it's possible for Imperial to almost get to map point at that point in time. They haven't had the same level of tactical mobility around the map that we saw from Ents in the first half, right? Everything seems to be like, we're attacking A this round. Let's make it yeah, work. We're true. attacking B this round. Let's make it work. And we've only had two gun rounds, so we'll see how this, this half progresses. I mean, I can respect it. I think sometimes... I think, too, like, Hades sees the utility being thrown, right? He's yeah. like, and just comes out, I have, like, maybe a second to make this play. I'm going for it. He is that kind of player. Like, his... his... Confidence is in his own abilities is pretty high. Good reason. Nine to eight. I don't really mind it if Imperial are a little bit more one-dimensional in, in how they approach the, the game, because if you don't have the kind of calling that Glaive is going to bring to to a team like Ents, then it's probably not worth trying it. It's probably better to just try and, and be a little bit more direct. Speak 
plenty of poles coming out. It's a three-man push. Now, Glaive will go down in the middle, but this could be a, a real shock. The bomb is quite far away, so they're going to find that immediately, but tactically, this is a huge position of Ents to be in. Well, I think at this point, with Ents in these positions, it's almost like you have... To, I want to say you have to shift somebody away, but you still got to be concerned about Dark. But certainly, a lot is going to rest here. Hades looking for the follow-up peak, misses the shot, but no way doesn't want to challenge that. Goofy finds the equalizer. And with that aggression towards B, Imperial don't want to mess with it whatsoever. Hades gets that shot on the second player in the middle. Oh, God. Surely you don't peek this. Surely you don't peek this. Oh, he saw the elbow. He wants him to do it again. But Dihas on the other side. Yeah, they're going to call in somebody else. They know the orb was down there now. So now they're definitely not going to peek it. 40 seconds left. Grenades being thrown into the A bomb site. They're flashing into A main as well. Really trying to put some pressure on. And now they come for Dark instead. Goofy on the great trade. Leaves Henny and Decenti alone. They don't know what... What do you do here? 24 seconds? Yeah, they're going to follow it right back up. They don't know what's going on over at the A-bomb site. They haven't been there. Koofy's doing a great job. Hades is close by as well, but he's shifting back towards middle just in case. Timing is everything. That's actually an ace. He got all five kills in the round. The timing could not have been better. Goofy able to save Ents in this round. That's magnificent. That's a very awkward, drawn-out round with the push out of B. Yeah. The tension of Diha and Goofy playing in dark as well. Good kill here. Vinny's even aware of the possibility. But this is all Diha's distraction allows Goofy to double up. And from here, no options left. And that last one is just like, yeah, I'll take it. Just standing in the right position. Yeah. Just winning by being at the right place at the right time. Well, it looked like Imperial was putting some good things together, but money's running low. If they can't win this round, they're in a ton of trouble. Goofy missed the player swinging in towards Dark, and he's going to pay for it with his life. Diha goes down. Phelps has hit him back in round 19. What a shocking opening to this bomb site, Phelps. And that's, that's probably it. That's the round one. And that is just no frills counter-strike. That is get into dark as fast as possible, challenging from B main, causing the defenders to panic just a little bit and finding a gap. You're right though, he missed the timing. That's, like, that can happen. But the fact that he got D here as well, just, I, that's so ridiculous. Like, how did Phelps know? That was that was the B players calling it. That was the B players who, who saw him get there early on. That's due to the pressure they were applying from both choke points right out of the gate so aggressively. And Dio was just dumping utility to try and find an escape that wasn't there. And that's a beautiful round. Nothing special. It's just so massively important at a point where Imperial have no money if they're to lose this. Five players survive. Nice and simple. Two quick kills. Get the win. Get out. And rinse and repeat. Let's go again. I mean, they do that a couple of more times. And they've pretty much got it, right? You don't have to overcomplicate it if you're on the Imperial side here. It's not strictly speaking required, especially if you've got openings like that. The only bummer about it is only the two kills. You don't dig into the economy a whole lot for Ents. They still have cash to buy in this round to replenish. And moving forward. Now they want to challenge mid with a bit of aggression, but they drop out into canals. They find the same opening towards Dark once again. Diha suddenly here, a little spam coming through on either side. And it's Phelps and no way to open it up. It's absolutely it again. perfect once again. Yeah. Here they Similar round, just yeah. pressure out of the gate. And this B bomb site from two different choke points, they've got to give attention to each one and it might be time to pull a third player over to start these rounds. You have one player watching B main, one player watching Dark, and neither of them able to handle the pressure back-to-back -back rounds. And Imperial have just found the easiest way possible to even things up. And more importantly, with two clean wins like this, with five players surviving, they don't have to worry about their economy, essentially, for the rest of this half, it feels. They're going to have plenty of yeah. cash to buy as many times as they need to get this victory. It's so fun watching the different philosophies play out because, you know, we really did see... A very, very different approach in the first half with Ents being on the T side and Glaive manipulating the defense, you know, enforcing Imperial to rotate around the map and then exploiting those rotations against them. Whereas this is a lot more direct. And, and it's it's got to be a little bit tricky and hard for Ents because it's like you, you can't just like have a timeout and just be like, all right, guys, just hold the B bomb site better, right? Try not to die. Yeah.
Yeah, that's um. I mean, I guess you could you can try and play further back, but obviously you give up a lot of a lot of real estate. Doing but this that. is this is where we get to see the the tactical the tactical boldness of Imperial and and how they want to play this because you've now abuse that B bomb site and force him into a position where really the solution is an extra player, which weakens somewhere else on the map. So now we get to see yeah. if Imperial is going to change things up, take advantage of that, call something towards the A bomb site, call something towards middle. And surely also one of the worst feelings if your glaive would be to to make the rotation to the B bomb site, to to get the extra player there, and then that's when they hit A and you're like, oh well, now we've really been outplayed. You exactly. Know? And I mean, that's the hard part for, for Glaive and Ents to figure out because that's going through Glaive's head because that yeah. Glaive's like, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, you know, you've got them rattled. You They're a little bit nervous. Also, if you don't make the call and they do it a third time, you're like, God damn, like, why are we... We should have had more players here. Glaive in the middle. That might have made up for it, but he can't get a headshot. Good trade. It's worth it for the T side. They'll take this one. Phelps. Has he seen Goofy? If not, he might he just see him in a second here. Oh, could be a free kill if we get the headshot. They saw the deep Molotov at the stairs, so they knew the potential was there, which is why Phelps was so heads up about it. Now, this is the real tricky one. With that trade in middle so quickly, Decency has gotten very far pushed up towards Temple, and he's been quiet this whole time. And this has to make Diha B really consider the timing of it. Utility at the B bomb site is going to pull him back, and Decency makes his move. This is starting to come together very nicely for Imperial. Yeah, look at how they wrap their tentacles around the bomb site. Isla, though, it's a very important kill. Taking out of Phelps, it's a bit of a start, but they still have to worry about this potential backstab that's coming in. They're not worried enough. But they're not. Shot. What an opening. <laughs> He's done it all. Taking down Glaive at the start of the round in the middle and then wrapping around the bomb site again. They can't hold that beat. It's a very different way they lose it this time, but. It's just as devastating. Yeah, well, you, I mean, there's, you had, they knew there was the potential for that lurk, right? They knew yeah. the potential was there. Diho was looking for it for quite some time. But if you, if you don't ever get a player to join up with you so you could actually go clear it, it, it's so hard to find that out on your own. There's so many timings you have to ignore and miss to handle that if you're Diha. And this end's defense is getting demolished. Three rounds in a row now, three rounds straight for Imperial. Fast and aggressive each and every round. And this is the fun part of different philosophies in Counter-Strike. Yeah. Glaives is a little bit slower, more calculated, tactically moving around the map. This is a lot more brute force, a lot more quick pace to it. See what you get on that initial contact and emphasize that opening trade and play the round out from there and kind of improvise in the mid-round as you go along with what's been provided. And once you hit hit the kind of flow state of calling like that, um, it's just very, very hard to stop, right? And so I've got to feel like they're losing grip, and they are. 11 to 10 is the scoreline, 22nd round. No way, on top of the scoreboard on his side, but 17 kills. He's tied with Hades on the other side, he's got 17 as well, but... And importantly, with the style as well, it's hard for Hades with the AWP to get in any kind of a position, right? Yeah. When all the action is happening, it's when there's smokes and choke points, Molotovs in different positions, flashbangs raining over from Imperial. The op just tends to get neutralized a little bit by that utility. And also, it's so fast that when it's successful with the opening kills the way we've seen, the op is more concerned about saving and staying alive than, than getting involved in trying to swing the round. I mean, they played a great Anubis so far, but look at the money that they have. It's not super impressive. They end up losing this round. Will they have enough to keep the battle on and make it interesting? It's a little bit more of a default kind of setup here for Imperial, though, that we're used to seeing. Bomb dropped towards the A-bomb side. Sort of making sure that there's no real aggression happening for Ents. They're checking outside of B, they're checking the middle. Yeah, much more of a standard play here. Which doesn't mean they won't end up at the B-bomb side once again. They could. You just have a different look to the start of the round, and then you kind of go back there anyway. It would be... It would be really bold and kind of tempting at the same time, I feel like, to, to try and go for that same B-play. Just with a different look. Poofy's out of utility. No smokes, no Molotovs. I think that's why he's getting aggressive. They spawn out no way. 
It's only one player playing it passively. Oh, and they want to get him. Here comes the double swing, a little bit of a jiggle. Flashbang is out as well. Oh, good shot. Dia goes down. Goofy is still here, and no way's trying to handle it. Goofy under a lot of pressure, and he goes down as well. This B bomb site, they cannot find any solutions. It's Hades. Essentially a 1v4. But a gut wrenching feeling as well. You think you've got one player? Well, none of you think you had one player isolated, and like you said. You want to try and kill him before anyone else can really get there to help him out, and they've just completely overrun the bomb they've, site. They've lost complete control of this map, and they are getting absolutely demolished. And I think now is when even even hope is at an all-time low. Belief that you can hold on to this. Imperial have beaten them in a number of ways, and it's not anything complex. It's not like Ensa is getting fooled. They're just losing fights. Yeah, it, like you said, it's devastating. You, how do you stop that from happening? Especially there, you've got the flash setups to go outside. You can you can find him alone. There's no one there to help him, and it doesn't even matter at all. You end up losing the two players sent out to try and get in the way. He's got three kills in this round. He got another kill inside of the V bomb site, and they're going to be finding Kylo at the end. Twelve to ten. Say it any better myself? No, try though. <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> setting me up. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, Ents have two chances. And, you know, they, they haven't brought that third player over at the start. They did rotate Hades here pretty pretty quickly. But they have tried various things. They have tried being aggressive out B main a couple of times. They've tried being aggressive in dark. They've pushed dark. And nothing seems to be working. Imperial's able to find a way around every setup that Ents bring out. Okay, They've, they're not as badly equipped as I thought they would be. Obviously the glaring presence of the MP9, but still a pretty good weapon. And this is one of those times I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point to the scoreboard. Diha with seven kills, and I don't always like doing it, but he's had a lot of attention at that B bomb site, and he's really struggling to contain it. While we saw him have impact on the T side over towards Dark, here on the CT side of Anubis, he, he's not done a, a fantastic job of holding off these hits or finding the one kill that lets your teammate have the success. No, I think that's fair. We said it in the first half, but that dark position is such a crucial part of the map. Phelps throwing the models off and trying to burn them back for a while. 50 seconds on the clock here. Bomb being picked up now. This time, dark is pretty unremarkable. They are keeping an eye on it, but... This is probably the most different feeling round that Ents have played. Yeah in this half because there's not that that overwhelming presence in dark and in B main. And it's not sending off alarm bells that A is going to be an issue. Kyler's playing behind the pillar. Glaive is going to turn around, but now the A bomb site will be tested. They have Molotov, but they're not throwing them at the moment. Glaive and Kyler just combining for an absolutely spectacular defense. I thought they were going to Molotov out the plateau up there because they had another two grenades still to throw, but they never really did, Imperial. Okay, well, back to the B-bomb site. Last round gets uh, pretty easy to call if you're Imperial. <laughs> it's got to make you feel terrible as well if you're the NSB defenders, because you're just like, oh, you guys had no issues. <laughs> What's even worse if it, if it happens again and you still can't hold it? Like, the summary, if you can't do it this last time, is going to be something like, well, we could have won the map probably if the B-defense had worked. Like, that's it. Like, yeah. There's just so many rounds where it just completely crumbled. It's really been exposed. Let's see what they've got. Final round, overtime, or Imperial take a victory. Good job from Glaive and Kyler to get their team in this position. Actually, Imperial sent no one towards the B-bomb site. Okay. Well, what is that in store for us then? They might just test it again with an explosion, I guess. Decency is going to walk up and put some pressure on Dark. But Imperial Poise, they want to find a timing where the second player isn't here. The second player this time will be Hades with the AWP as well. Yeah, throwing down the Molotovs. He's scrambling to get back into position. He wants to help out Kyla, who's in a little bit of trouble here. Failed the jump. Now has to be careful. He doesn't get too flashed, and he will be. Phelps! That's the entry. They need it. Look at the water high ground here. It's Hades to bring him down. They're fighting for overtime on the end side. They want to get rid of Imperial and try and see if they can keep the battle going for a little while longer. Yeah, they 
Ooh, this is awkward decency. This timing is everything. Diaz playing behind the pillar, not exposed quite yet. There it is. There's the kill, and they're all coming back to dark. They're all coming back to this bomb site. Molotov, they're gonna go right. Oh no, they're not. Vinny, he thought he had the timing. He burns a lot, and Dia hears all those ticks of the Molotov. One hold. That's all you need at a bomb site that you've struggled to hold on to throughout this half. And they really have. Diaz got beat a number of times. This time, he just had the perfect timing. Knew when to turn around. 20 oh. seconds here. That smoke in B-Main is such a luxury. That yeah, means he can commit to holding this position instead. Again, he's got such a tight angle here. What do they do? They can't do anything. Dia on the quad kill, and that's how we get to overtime. That's beautiful. And, it's, and they, they just barely hold on. This is by their fingernails. That A defense twice. You get 12-10 by abusing the B bomb site. You try and switch things up towards A. One round, you get deleted. The other round, you get stopped cold. Hades, Kyler, and Glaive on that A defense were magnificent to bring Ensta overtime. And the truth is, right, if Diha doesn't get especially that first kill, then they can open up the entire round once again, Imperial, but... That first one with the MP9 was everything. Glaive's opping. We've switched into a double off setup right in overtime. Okay. Well, they have the money for it, so... I guess why not? See if they can hold the B bomb site. It's a good start. Diha taking down. No way. This is really what's been haunting their dreams for a while here. Ends. They're trying to see if they can make it work. Goofy gets a headshot, and this is what they needed earlier. It slows it down. It makes it a lot more clunky for Imperial. Yeah, those last two rounds of regulation allow Ends to take a deep breath. And this time, it's like, okay, if you guys are going to try and brute force your way early on in these rounds through these choke points, we're going to have utility dump. We're going to dump Molotovs. We're going to dump smokes, jump nades, everything to make this uncomfortable for you coming through the smoke. And we're going to play tucked up right behind them. When you guys throw these flashbangs, when you guys try and come through the smoke, it's not going to be a, a, an angle way, way far away. We're going to be right up in your face. And they shut both the attempts down. Imperial spread across the map. Vinny with a lurk smoke over at A. Phelps looking for a canal's peak. And Henny obviously going for a kill. He's got the bomb in an AWP and he's got a pick. Well, we introduced this whole game talking a fair bit about Henny. If he can win around like this with the AWP, then that would certainly reignite the conversation once again. But the grenades just making it very, very hard for him to find anything smokes and flashes and it's buying more time than he has right now 20 it, seconds and vinny's calling the a bomb sites clear he just got in but there's no time to make that rotation over there there's yeah, no time for him to get out he's so locked in right now oh that's that's devastating you're right if if he would have had 10 more seconds it could have been really interesting nothing that they could do about it first round of overtime and it goes to ends yeah pressure on imperial now three in a row where their defense struggled previously now they've rattled a bunch off in a row and diha this round having impact as well holding on to dark or goofy as well sitting behind the smoke in b main both of them hold on to their respective choke points and imperial don't get those opening kills or trades still gotta say Getting killed by Goofy in any game is just, you know, it's got to be one of the worst experiences. Because his name is Goofy? Yeah. Yeah. That'd make me angry. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know if it's just irrational on my part. That is a little irrational. I'd be like, damn. Like, come on, I can't get killed by a guy named Goofy. All right, well, Glaive's op is going to be put to the test. Got it in Temple. And that, that might be, I mean... We don't see Glaive opping very frequently. And I think part of the reason is that he hasn't had a massive number of bodies headed in his direction. I've seen him on the minimap take that engagement against Decent T through the double doors a number of times through the second half. And I think he's just like, if you're going to take that fight, if you're going to slide in and expect it to be an M4, I'm just going to pick up an op and get an easy kill. Yeah. It's a very different experience if you're, if you're peaking that and your awareness is a little bit closer. You're expected to take a fight at a certain range and you just get completely deleted. Hades here, Molotov down. It's a good little grenade, but there's nobody there to really capitalize on it. He's going to stick around. It doesn't even really move. I think he moved back into the grenade. For when this smoke though. fades, there's no more smokes for the choke points at this bomb site. Now, thankfully for Phelps and Vinny, or not for Phelps and Vinny, but they have no utility. So there's no flashbangs, no Molotovs to clear out dark to give yourself an advantage in this fight. A decent grenade landing on Phelps. 
See what Goofy could do. He's got some backup. Is he even going to need it at this stage? He almost got the double on his own. Pilar just has to get worried about that he doesn't get shot from main. Otherwise, he should be good to get this next one. Vihar gets a long-range fight, and it leaves Henny alone with 20 seconds. A one versus three. And they know exactly where it is. There's no more surprises here. Should be Ents winning the second round here. It's so hard to be super critical of Imperial, but it feels like the decision not to continue leaning on the weakness of that B bomb site and sure. regulation yeah. is really coming back to haunt them here. But again, like it's it's so hard to be critical of that because at some point you feel like you can change things up. At some point you feel like enough is enough. We've won five rounds here. It's not that I've done it a lot, but you know, you rob the same casino like two or three times. You want to find a new one, Jason, right? Yeah, like, exactly. You're going to go back and be like, ah. Oh. Yeah, you know, security is catching up to your tricks. Yeah. If I was going to rob a casino, I'd pr definitely bring you, Jason, I feel like. Yeah, you think I've... Well, what role would I play? Um, Am I the driver? I feel like just like in just uh you know the the burglar just like in the Hobbit like we need someone who's you know it's gonna be slightly like She's Hobbit like <laughs> is that what you're getting at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something like that you know someone that security cameras and you know sure think you can blend into the crowd Jason okay just your average Joe that's what I mean strolling through fourteen twelve. Impressive from Ents, a recovery right at the end of regulation, and now they're making it hurt. This time there's a MAC-10. No way you would imagine is going to lead the way through smoke, through fire. Yeah. And Ents is, I mean, Goofy's just like, I'm holding counter nades. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know it's coming. He's just ready. <laughs> that is so funny. It's the with the early headshot. The laughs have gone away from Imperial. They're not finding it funny at all right now. They want to abuse this bomb stuff, but they're not being allowed to. The magic has disappeared, and Ents winning three rounds in a row to start overtime with. And they're laughing on the other side now. They've stolen everything, even the even the smiles. Yeah, I mean, especially for Glaive, the guy who I mentioned had said, I have to learn to trust my teammates a little bit. You had to have a lot of trust in those defenders of the B-bomb site to be able to figure it out eventually. And they've come out on top three in a row in overtime. And now you switch sides to the easier side of Anubis and the side where Glaive called a fantastic first half. All they need is one. One out of these next three rounds. And they could walk away, sure. Maybe a little bit beat up, maybe a little bit sweaty, but that's not a problem. Let's see, 80s. 19 kills, so it's been a pretty decent game for him, all things considered. No way, a 20, but I feel like he's been stuck there for a minute now. And remember, the magic of this uh, T side from Ensign Glaive in the, in the first half was presence and utility to force back any dark players, presence and utility in middle to force back the mid player, force Imperial to play without information. That's what that's what allowed them to move around the map so effectively. Yeah, and then once Imperial got a little bit stressed, they started to rotate a lot, and then Lay was able to guess the right rotations more often than not. Good counter utility from the mid defender, though, from Hetty. Delaying the progress, he's got the op now, holding the angle. He's got a second as well. Henny steps up to the plate and finds his impact. Just that extra kill in the middle. You'd say maybe it's ill-advised, maybe it's dangerous. You risk getting taken down, but when you're hemming like that, that's what we're talking about. That's the magic. Well, yeah, but that's what what activates it is the counter utility. Glaive throws a Molotov to prevent the peak from, from the mid-window, and then all of a sudden... There's a counter Molotov to kind of neutralize that one to, to equalize the timing, and Henny feels confident sliding into the angle. Good shot from Vinny with the op. He had a very rough first half by no no fault of his own, just teammates constantly falling around him and leaving him alone and isolated at the A bomb site. Well, this time with an op, he gets a double kill as well. Henny's gonna clean it up. An AWP full house between Vinny and Henny. First round of their CT side in overtime. And they need another two rounds like this. Oh my god, that shot is so quick. Echoes of kind of highlights that we associate with Henny when we 
read his name on his roster. That, that's what we're expecting. That's what we want for this project to really work out. 15 to 13 now. Uh, moving into the next round rather quickly. There's the punish. And he tries to flex, and Hades shuts him down. Five on four for Ents. Five on four for Glaive. Ooh, yeah, fire raining down from above as well. To be and thrown out here from Kyla. This is this is just deja vu to the to the first half of regulation. Yep. Look what they've done. They got an opening kill. That's Henny who supports the eight bomb site, and then he, he, he forced back all the defense, pulled a third player over towards B, and Vinny's like, I got nothing to do again. I'm just gonna chuck out utility and try and survive as long as possible. Kyla trying to find a timing, maybe a little bit early. And Vinny actually did get the kill in the meantime, so the bomb's gonna get planted here, but look at the quick retake, they're everywhere! This should be good! Hades, the last one left with the AWP, against four players, he picks up one more shot and he's ready! He knows about that high ground position, this is where he's dangerous, but the smoke is the big thing to try and get rid of him, that is how you beat the AWP! Defusing inside, he's got the... Gun out, sneaking in his front, he's got a no, and I don't think he can find it. He might have found the kill, but even then, the round was over. No way, just absolutely diffusing the entire situation. Yeah, you could see him put the finger up as well. One more is what he's saying. One more, a third round on this overtime, and they go to double OT. Ants cannot find a way to break through. Hades makes that very, very interesting, very close. But that retake is spot on. You're exactly right. I think a little bit too quick on that push. Yeah. Right when the bomb gets planted, trying to jump up, then he's able to take that one. I think that was Goofy. And the retake comes storming in behind the smoke after that kill. It's down some really thin margins. You could tell a couple of things going slightly differently. And it might have been ends winning that round, all things considered. But um, we might go into double overtime if it keeps going this way. Ooh, the reload, the flash coming in, they're hunting for him. They know that he's back there somewhere. Trying to do the damage, but not really able to find him. I'm surprised. He could have been dead. Yeah, he could have been. He's lucky to get away with that, but Ants, I think, too, is going to be very pleased. They've just taken mid-control very early on. There's a minute and 20 seconds to work with now that you've forced the defense away, now that you've shown that mid can be a problem area. Temple mollied off. It's going to create a lot of real estate for Ents to work with. Yeah. We mentioned it several times, this is where Glaive has done so much work in regulation when they were on the T side, so we'll see if they can do it again. And, and remember too, like it, frequently in the first half, when Enz got this position, the A defense got aggressive and tucked into A main very, very deep. Vinny is there again. Glaive, he gets out, dueled, and another headshot comes through! I can't believe it, I thought for sure he was going to get traded, and if he had it, it would have opened up this crunch towards the B bomb site, but now instead, it's very flat. It's very one-sided. They're all going to be trying to come through main here. You see the shadow showing on the ground for no way. He's able to pick up the first kill. Might get more than that. It's a huge double for him. And that's going to secure that double overtime position. I need translations right now. <laughs> Immediate translations. He's hyped up and I love it. He said, I'm the shit. Don't yeah. test my spot on the map. <laughs> I love the attitude. That's exactly how you should be playing. That's a nice double kill here as well. Glaive and Diha can't handle business, can't find the trade. Even no way at B main sees the shadow, but just holds his nerve, knocks him down. Imperial rattle off three of their own and we go double OT. Double overtime. Okay, let's go. Clave. A couple of tickets into the lottery in the middle, but I'm going to get what he wanted on the other side. Now thinking about it. It's Goofy that's going to be moving forward. I haven't really had many clean fights at the A main entrance. Sometimes you get that. Teams that are really good at just taking those fights. Oh, they actually use that smoke to move forward in. That's the one way we talked about earlier, and it's no way again. Remember right at the start of regulation, they did this and it yep. worked. And it did it once again. Oh, and you could see Diha looking for it, and then the smoke gets blown open, and the fight's actually in dark itself. Glaive finds an opening. That's decent T to fall down. 
Four on four. Op is discovered in A main. Goofy might slide into this. Vinny is still here waiting and he can't win the fight. Henny's all alone. B defense has not budged. But better honestly. And starting to pull back into the double setup over here. No way. Bit of an off angle here, but the elbow showing. I can't believe he's still alive. He's going to get traded. And it might not make a difference at the end here. I think Henny. Could you even do one versus three? I mean, you need to show up and try and get the early kill. You never know if you're going to get the wall bang or something like that, but failing that is probably not going to be enough. Probably not, no. And remember, the overtime rule is a little bit different at the majors as well. Money can be an issue, especially investing in the AWPs. Yeah. So Henny's just going to stay far back. He doesn't get any of the peaks that he wanted, any of the mistakes that might have activated him to move forward. And while Ents, if they had just won this round... In the first overtime, the, the map would be done, but they do find it in the first round of second overtime. There's a classic, isn't it? Kyla, look at him go, and Hades, both at 23 kills. Doing magnificent work. I love the fact that they return to that same potential one way. You're right, there was a bit of a switch up in the fact that they blew it open, but still like the same idea using the smoke to move forward. And it's one of those tricks that can be so effective, it just, you can't bust it out that freak. I think that might be the second or third, maybe the third time that we've yeah. seen it throughout. It happened really early on in regulation, and they've thrown it a couple of times and not used it, and that's that's kind of the conditioning that they're trying to instill, is we'll see this smoke frequently, the potential for this one way is there, but we won't actually use it every single time. Dia was ready for the peak over the edge, not ready for the smoke being blown open. You do get another timeout in overtime, so you can get a chance to talk things through. I kind of like that. Org has come out once again for Vinny. He said he's, he's had a tough time playing the CT side. It's just because he's always been forced into like crappy fights and situations, either like 1v4 being split from two different choke points from camera and main, yeah. or he's been forced, as we saw previously, to just play it so passive that you can't really have an impact on holding the bomb site, And that's just by virtue of the way Ence has worked this map from the T side very, very efficiently. Phelps looking for a fight, blows open the smoke, exposes them to the flashbang, Goofy with the rebuttal. No way comes in second a little bit late, and Dia's like, oh, you want to push B main? I'll slide into dark. Yeah, <laughs> instantly trying to take up that position. Senti coming in, oh, that's a nice pick off Hades. They were throwing grenades from back there. They were ready to set up a bit of a grenade, I think, for Dihar to maybe make a move. And he's lucky to be alive behind that one. And he's realized now he's also getting boxed in. There is someone walking up behind him. He's about to be dead. Again, the timing betrays him. And this defense is rock solid. Nothing that Glaive could do about this. That's a great find from Decency. Good, bold push through Whoa. middle. Hades was even looking for that push. He had his op scoped up on it, and you're exactly right. It was just the timing of the call of when to throw the utility, when to get ready for the execute, and, and Hades looks away. It started with this. Blowing open the smoke, T's turn their eyes to it, and a flashbang comes over the wall. Activates that initial kill. And this time, the shift in the defense gets everyone in the right place at the right time, and a victory for Imperial. We're all tied up at 16. See if they can get one more. This is a little bit more straightforward. It ends no messing around on this one. They're going to go straight for the bomb site. They got one opening here, and if no way goes down, it might be the side lost completely. Kyla able to catch him. He couldn't get out around the corner. This is very, very powerful. It's a taste of your own medicine, isn't yeah. it? If you're Imperial, you're like, they're the, it's their turn to bully themselves into the B bomb site. Decency. Oh, good shot on the Diha. Glaive is up on the platform, and he finds the spray down. Low on HP, so he falls immediately afterwards. Yeah, he was trying to get out of that Molotov, so he just had to run for it. Glaive, I'm surprised he even got the kill to begin with. How do you get this defuse? There's no smoke, sure you've... Oh, there we go, they picked up one. Gonna be throwing it in towards that position. Hyla, a little bit early in the cycle, he just goes straight oh. for it. A missed shot from Hades on the other side. It's out of the crumble, and he goes down to Henny. They tap the bomb once. If he gets his kill through, it's done, but he's not connecting on the shot. Oh. And gets the headshot right at the end. A ridiculous way to win the round. Oh, you can see just devastation on Vinny's face immediately as he realizes what happened. 
I'll tell you what, there's something with Hades and post plants with these off shots. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I feel bad because it's like PTSD just clicks in immediately, but he gets bailed out by his teammate. What a find. Right around the edge of the smoke, Kyler, first bullet. Oh, that is so disgusting. Surely that sets up ends very nicely. 17, 16. They just need a couple of more rounds here. First to 19. Ooh, they burn up Kyler alive. Yeah, good nade stack. Nades and a Molotov in his position. Hades has to immediately train his eye towards middle in case they come streaming in. Meanwhile, Goofy and Diha getting aggressive. Excuse me. Goofy and Glaive. Glaive with the op just backs off the angle. They had to deal with this one early, this exact push. Goofy ready for it, finds the kill, equalized at four. Mid is still a pressure point though for Ence's defense. Nobody's home and nobody's been home for quite some time. Yeah, but do they realize? Doesn't look like they're moving a lot across the map at the moment, Imperial there. A little bit nervous to make the next move. Here we go. Grenades. I do like the counter smoke towards the camp position, but Hades is still here. It's a very strong position for him. Normally, he does just get hunted down. Phelps relentlessly chasing him. It's the bomb, though. Bomb. Oh, boy, Diha not ready for that fight. Didn't know when it was going to come in. You get that kill, maybe it can slow things down. But this is a round for Imperial 100% of the time. Glaive and Goofy back off. I want, I'd love to ask Phelps about this particular round because hunting down an orb like Hades to me seems like a very, very dangerous idea. He's one of those players that will, you know, come back for more. He'll keep fighting you. So just Phelps saying, you know what? I, I've, I'm just going to put the pressure on and you're going to crumble. I think he was the second player, right? One player kind of slid out, took some shots. Hades fired and Phelps was the second player swinging wide been, yeah. after the fact. So just being bold. And I mean, that's the style that Imperial have had throughout all their T-sides is the emphasis is always on that trade. Yeah. Hunt down that trade kill. That's sick. I think I think actually for me, I was watching Hades and I understood the positioning when mid was such a problem, but when Diha puts that smoke down, it's like Hades was still stuck in that mindset of not having any coverage from middle, yeah. so had to stay aggressive. I thought there might have been a timing Hades could have repositioned back to the bomb site, play the pillar, but he stayed at that a more aggressive angle that provided less cover on the fallback. 17 all. Oh, well, it's gonna keep on going, there's... Another chance now for even triple overtime. Why not? First ever CS2 Major. Why not get the maximum out of it? Yeah, get all, all the rounds. rounds. I'm going to change the format to MR12. It's going to stop us from playing a long game. Maybe I'm hoping that someone is going to be a little bit careless in the middle. Well, they're going slow and quiet, right? They're not using utility, so he might get a freebie. An opportunity at the very least. Let's sound off that AWP and they're gonna know about it. A lot of grenades being exchanged here in the middle, really, from both sides. They're trying to bait out a peak, a response from this defense. It's not happening. Kyler's even come back. They're really trusting that smoke in A main because no one's paying attention to it. It's just now faded. And Glaive's gonna have to fall back and take up that position. The AWP has been shown in middle. And now it's two M4s defending. Make that one as Goofy rotates away. They've got to be worried about this B defense, even if they kind of sold nope. it. This is all down to the training and regulation, right? They know yeah. the B bomb site has been abused. They're actually coming mid. They're going to split the A bomb site. Smoke is down, but they might just go straight through it. A little bit of an aid. Kyla playing in front. Glaive burns alive, and now the lineup is ready. Kyla finds another headshot. He spins around, picks up the quad, and he's ready. The spray is through. It's an ace. That is so perfect from Kyler. Did he drop his mouse after the fact as well? This guy is nuts. That is a sequence and a half. Look at him go, steps in front of the Molotov, spams down two, swaps to the AK. Third one's a little bit of luck, but this from here is all skill.
and trying to force your way through that smoke, individually shut down by just one man. God damn. That 30 is... kills now on Kyler. And that is quite something. Without, without him, it, to be honest, even if he got the triple and then died, they could have still lost a round quite easily, right? That's so crazy. He does everything. That's given Ents a chance to close this out one more time. They've got one round. One and what round. a contrast for Imperial to, to regulation. Their yeah. rounds have opened up much more calm and slow and passive. Yeah. The pressure of losing this map. Yeah, maybe it's getting to them. I think it's it's given Ents a lot of breathing room. <laughs> They're loving this. They don't have to do the panicked utility dumps. And fair play. Ents started sort of figuring it out towards the end. Yeah, I've got to say, though, the call from Imperial last round was really good, right? They had the right idea. They put some pressure on. They killed Glee before anyone even really shows up with the Molotov. They're kind of they're kind of rinse and repeating the previous round as well. Oh, Hades. I don't is he ready for the flick down? No. Goofy is pushed out. Good trade. Important trade. And he can't find a timing to fall back. So Molotov to delay things, but he's fighting to the death. Yeah. Oh, flashed out from a teammate. If he has like a rifle out, he might have got that kill actually. Instead, Vinny will find a way to take him down. Deha alone at the bomb site. Two versus four here. Glaive started to get there ever so slowly. 15 seconds. Actually, the time. Oh, it's not going to work against them here. Glaive getting hunted down. It's triple overtime oh, instead. Man, man, we keep it going. Oh, they're back to laughing and giving, and it's going to feel good for the moment. Triple overtime. This Imperial team is a hard one to put away. That's the fourth chance had that. Ens that's the fourth chance that Ens has had to yeah. actually close out this map. Imperial had two of their own in regulation that they lost up 12-10. But man, Ents is really struggling to find that final round. 18 all. Oh, let's see if they've got any more left this is in new. them here. This is new, this mid push from Ents. They, we haven't seen this yet. Great double flashes. Catch him completely off guard and it's a two for one trade. It's worked absolutely perfectly. Yeah, I, I was, I'm stunned. 32 kills. It's Kylo again with a double opening. Hades not going to miss this shot. Taking down Phelps, who was trying to sneak his way through the smoke there. And fair play to Phelps. I mean, it's a disparate round anyway. You've lost the, the opening two to one. You feel like you have to try something. Two on four here. Unfolding. Well, it's all not going to make a big difference at all. Kind of need um, a huge mistake to come out from the end side, and I just don't, I don't think Glaive is going to allow that to happen. Shuffling utility as well. That smoke is not going to do anything. Nobody's in that position. B players for Ents are starting to push forward to get a quick rotation, a quick flank, a quick backstab. Vinny's going to try and do everything he can to open up this bomb site. Hades. Shouldn't be forced out, but he smokes it anyways, and that's a quick shot. One remaining. No way gets the trade, but there's no way into this bomb site. Yeah, one, two, three. They peek him at the same time. It's Kyler with another kill at the end. Triple for him. He just he can't be stopped. What a time to really come alive. You can see. He went back there a little bit. Um, a little bit excited. A little bit nervous, I would imagine. Yeah. After everything that's gone down in this game, he watched his team almost almost crumble under the pressure and regulation, force their way into overtime, watch them lose three map points. Never comfortable as a coach. Goofy is going to go for the push. I think Molotov might have been a little bit late. Henny steps into it, takes a little bit of damage, just one tick, but finds the opening pick. That kind of aggression netted Ents a huge advantage in the previous round. This time it betrays them. Leaves Diha alone at the B-bomb site. You could see the Imperial have really slowed down. Even if they got the kill, they're like, well, let's just see if they get even more aggressive. And it's not a bad idea because they kind of are in the middle here. Leave. Ready. 
case anything happens with the fight and oh. they still can't get, uh, get away from Norway. This is crazy. Well, that's, I think, I think Kyler's going to be a little frustrated because Glaive on the retreat ran in front of him to fall back towards double doors and that made Kyler kind of hold his trigger for that initial battle and unfortunately Kyler eats the bullet. 49 seconds here. Getting back towards the B bomb site. Looks like they want to try and do a little bit here. Although the bomb is still on the other side, so it might just all be a bit of a fake. Winning pick. No way. Picking up the shot against Glaive. That kind of aggression netted ends a huge advantage spins in the previous around, round. But he does take down no way, them. but again, the bomb is being passed over on this side, and Hades would have had to get some really stunning kills to even get close to that round. Yeah, that was all going to just be on some Herculean effort out of Hades. That just wasn't possible. Good job from Imperial. They know where Diha is as well. He's going to go for it because they got plenty of money considering overtime. Deep nade, good damage, but too many players to find. He's pulled Vinny out. But again, these kills need to happen right now, and Vinny's going to peek on contact. It's 19 for everyone. A chance for quadruple overtime. We're really doing it. Great consistency in terms of the scoreboard over in the Imperial side, and I, I guess to some extent the same is true. Maybe Diha has a little bit further behind, but it's not devastating. Um, yeah, this is obviously a very competitive game. Imperial starting to show in this, especially in this this triple overtime and even double overtime to an extent, some some more strategic depth than what we saw in regulation, just by virtue of them having so much success with the B bomb site. But now we're seeing them kind of prioritize mid as the first part of the map they want to challenge. Gone a couple times towards a main. Starting to show the different ways they want to attack different parts of the map. One sense his defense really figured out good ways to counter the fast aggression towards B. They've had to throw a little bit more creativity into things. How much they have left? I mean, you're running the playbook to play, you know, an MR12 now. <laughs> you're just, you're expending all of it. You're into the triple overtimes. It's, how long do you stay creative if you're an in-game leader in one of these two teams here? How long before you start recycling something that you thought maybe worked in the past? They can creep behind these smokes in a main. They have the lurk smoke up. They can actually disrespect the choke point smoke, and Phelps is doing just that. Glaive, oh, you better be aware. Kyler is going to have a big job over the smoke, and he can't do it. Glaive stands his ground, but there's the backstab from No Way, and it's a man advantage for Imperial with control of the bomb site. Could be another backstab coming in. The Famas making its way slowly, but yeah, Phelps is ready. Guarding the beans with the AK-47, he's not to look anywhere else. His teammates got his back. There's no reason for him to ever look away from this one. He, oh, I can't believe it. He still wins the fight. That's the first step in the right direction here. The Imperial should still be winning this round every single time. Henny is quick with the AWP, and I think there's no way for him not to be exposed here. It's Henny to take him down. It's a slight lead for Imperial going into the second half of the third overtime. Yeah, 2-1 as they switch sides again. Going to put a lot on Glaive for calling, and you're right. I mean, you talked about, you know, Imperial going deep into their playbook. Now Glaive has got to kind of... This is this is the stage in the game, certainly, where you start improvising a little bit based off how the map has gone already. You've run a lot of the things out of your game plan, but, I mean, you have to give some credence to the thought that that kind of leans in the favor of Ensign Glaive. There's no more experienced in-game leader than Glaive, so not exactly going to put him on the back foot. He's been here many times. Deep smoke towards the stairs. No aggression with it. Kyler's going to take control of A-Main quickly. Vinny with a counter Molotov to slow things down. And this is Ents showing they want to hit the A-Bomb site. Molotov camera, Molotov behind the pillar. That lures a lot of players to shift away from B. Yeah. Double in middle, double on A. Just a single player on B for a good 5-10 seconds there. We'll see what they do with it. The bomb is... Suspiciously close to the B bomb site, though, on the minimap, so I guess that is something to consider as well. It seems like they've frozen across the map here on the end side, expecting a reaction from Imperial. It's Which... that next step, right? It's that, that, that second stage of map control for ends. Glaive takes dark, they have utility in middle, presence in middle now to clear out the double doors. AD's looking for this push, and it's coming. But unable to capitalize. Yeah, he had the right idea. He's got some backup out here as well. No 
away. Very confident in taking some of these fights. Flash around the corner, but his accuracy is deadly Ooh. and he's ready. Taking down Hades as well. Two versus four now, 30 seconds. He's, I've rarely seen a player with such confidence. Yeah, that's, I, they could never clear him out. And the bomb's all the way back. Even if Kyler and Goofy wanted to do something towards the eight bomb site, they have to hustle to pick this up first. This is going to give Imperial two more chances to close out the map. There's only 12 seconds. This round's done. Yeah. And it's going to be 21 to 19. It's been a long, drawn-out battle of three overtimes in Imperial once again, just like regulation. Two chances to win the map. It's kind of sick. Like, you throw flashes and grenades at no way, and instead of responding by being pressured, he's just, he just seems almost just annoyed. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm actually even more angry now. It's, it's, it's really hard to, to clear him out. Hades created the opportunity, right? When he sees the push, he sees one player peeking from the choke point. No way's already swung out far to the left. He puts the Molotov down in B main, and that should isolate No way. But because he has an AWP, He's got to wait for a rifle to come up. And when that player dies, it's like, what are we supposed to do? The op isn't the guy who wants to get aggressive yeah. and he's, he's not interested in that kind of a fight. And no way takes it to him. First to 22. It's Imperial. One step away now, all of a sudden. What a grueling match this has been. Clay wants to hunt it down and he will. Senti goes down in the middle and Henny back here, Flash, Molotov burning him alive in the corner. He was very, very low, could have been dead, but he sticks around for the kill against Diha. Maybe a little bit reckless there on Diha. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess he might have thought that Molotov would have cleared out that angle. That's what I, the, the only thing I can think of, that Henny had no chance of being there because of the flames, and Henny found the one safe pixel to stand in. Equalizing things into a four on four, but they're not done yet. Enz starting to pinch onto this B bomb site. No way. Saw it coming. Takes down Glaive. And he smoked off for a minute here. And they're going to take down No Way. It's a good kill for Goofy and Kyla. Back in the saddle now. Taking down Phelps. Two versus three. They're fighting to stay in the map oh. here, but Henny, close range. They do bait out the shot, and they're going to double team. Ooh. Oh, there we go, Vinny. Took an extra five seconds. Doesn't quite get the flick. The bomb is picked up, and it's a nuts. Oh, Vinny, oh, the unlucky oh, 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 AWP oh, player to bring oh, oh, down oh, oh, Ents. Unreal. A triple overtime victory for Imperial. Ents have got to be shocked and stunned. What a start to the major for the Brazilians. Beautiful work. And they had to do it with a lot of different styles. I was so confused when he didn't fire the AWP at the beginning. I thought, what's going on? Like, have I missed something? <laughs> I know. I think Ents slowed down. They got a little bit nervous.